It's like the principles, the, the fundamentals are the same. Which is be entertaining. Yeah. Don't say anything that is going to get you clipped and canceled. Which I, say, I, I say things that get me clipped and canceled I, all the I, time. I, I, I'm aware of. I'm aware yeah. of this. I am, I'm, I'm, I'm transgressing somewhat. I have some people that are not, that are in my community that are not going to be happy that I'm here. Um, really? Yes. Oh, oh, Kassan, surely you know. That's crazy. <laughs> now, I, I'm always, I'm always shocked when, uh, when, when people whose like opinions, uh, I, I'm very closely aligned with at least. Like, I'm shocked when their communities are like, "Don't talk to that guy." You, you know. So, let's 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 run back to like our, well, not our, because it was one sided initially. Like my first impression of you, right? Oh yeah. It was it was not necessarily positive. I had to be corrected by other people in my community who's opinions I trusted because I saw aesthetics, you know what I'm saying? I see me, I see uh, uh, I see the beard. It's not fully on your neck. Uh-huh. So you, you're, you're, you've upgraded beyond the, the typical aesthetics. And I see the, the, the frogs and like the stuff going past. And so, you know, I'm, I'm out of touch. I'm like, Oh, this is another one of these motherfuckers. And so like, I'll never forget. I put you in the first break bread video. Yeah, the deba- you, as a debate bro. As a debate bro. Yeah. Which I apologize for, Chad. No, it's all good. I mean, dude, listen, that was like, as far as like uh, uh, left-wing content creators uh, uh, not fully grasping what I do, um, yours was like the least offensive. So I never really, I never really uh, got upset at that beyond like, oh, it's just a misunderstanding, but I totally understand why. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so I think that's what, so it's a combination of things. I think... The first step is aesthetically. Oh, I need one of these. Can I, can I go ahead and can I partake? It's nicotine gum. Oh, this isn't this isn't like a massager. What is oh, this? that's a massage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can. Yeah, go ahead. Now, now you've extended my welcome here a good thirty minutes at least. Um, you gotta show me how to use that. No, you, hold on. I'll show you. And he's using the massage gun. People that the people that are longtime viewers of mine that know that every every um you, uh, you just first you turn it up. Change the, change the, the people, people that have watched my str- Oh my fucking God. I, I did. Listen, I'm in the same boat. That's why I have it. <laughs> it so I'm this, an is, old this man. is a future investment. No, you I'm, trust me. You don't know what old feels like yet. A sign. How old are you? I'm 40. I turned 41 Monday. Okay, well, I'm not that far off. I'm, Are I'm you about thirty yet. I'm, I'm thirty two. Yeah. I'm about to be thirty two. Okay. So you, you're starting to catch the first wave. Yeah, I was partially deaf for, uh, almost uh, well for twenty four hours uh two days ago. Just, just cause. Um. Well, I thought like I have eczema for the first time in my life. I've, I've gotten eczema, which is not a thing that I used to have. Here you go okay. for the okay. camera. That's a problem. Yeah. Um, and. I thought because of that, and also because I'm like kind of sick and groggy, and my ear just like, um, like I was in the shower and I was like doing this when I always do to try to get the water out of my ear, and it like clogged my ear, and then I was like partially deaf. And I was like, oh shit! I wonder if this is because I am um, dying. Because I, well, I thought <laughs> I'm old, and I wonder if it's because I have allergies uh, to my dog. No, I, that's crazy. I had a similar experience. I have lost some hearing in this left ear. Oh, really? Yeah. I think mine was well, COVID related. Oh, um, mine was just like it was clogged from earwax. I had swimmer's ear. Yeah, and they took it out. It was nasty as fuck, but it was so it was awesome. Like I was listening in four D. It was in HD in four K. That's, that's it. We we're, we're now we're comfortable. Now we're comfortable. Yeah. But um, so going back to what I was saying, like I think the aesthetics throw people off. And so like, it wasn't until, so I hadn't, to be fair, I hadn't watched hardly any of your content at that point in time. I had heard about you because I mean, if you just, I don't know what's going on in the chat, but we have a lot of crossover. If I look at my YouTube yeah. analytics, you and like three other of your, uh, like fan accounts, fan accounts yeah. are like t- in my top, you know, viewers also watch whatever. 
And so people were like, no, FD, you got to sound wrong. It's not debate, bro. Not barely, yada, yada, yada. Yeah, I actually am very much an anti-debate, bro. Which I eventually caught on to. And I appreciate that. We also had, so so me, so me secretly, me and Hassan have obviously, we've been best friends for like two years. Um, as, as Hassan has coached me through getting better at not involving myself in bullshit, which I have failed on multiple occasions to do. I know. <laughs> it's hard. It's hard not to. It's, it, I get it. It doesn't make sense. But that's the, and so that's the flip side, though, because I, I saw something you did a couple of weeks ago where you were, like, basically yelling at your chat, like, y'all make it impossible to get certain, like, guests. You know oh, yeah, saying? always. Yeah. And so I think that's the, that's the thing. If I, if I give the most credence to my people who are in my community or who I talk to and whose opinions I respect, I think that's the thing that becomes – a flaw for both of us, but since you are much more prominent is that the community you develop feeds off the energy you have, you know what I mean? Yeah. And so like other people see that energy and like every once in a while you, you act like a normal person. Somebody says something crazy to you and you say, Oh fuck you. And your, your community's like, yo, it's fuck whoever this is for the next yeah. 48 hours. And I, well, I, I, and I tried to make sure that we don't engage in, uh, you know, we don't engage in like that kind of uh, insane behavior all the time. And I yell about that kind of behavior all the time. Like a big chunk of why I think a lot of uh, like, quote unquote, leftists online on Twitter don't like me is because I spend a decent amount of time shitting on the left from the left by saying like, guys, you know, put your best foot forward. Don't behave like this. And those moments are very clippable uh, because a lot of people just want to sell their sub stacks or their ko fis or whatever coffee. I don't even know what the hell this shit is. Yeah, it's just like most people on Twitter. Like that's they always are trying to. You is know, that like a monetization of? Yeah, it's like a sub stack content. Just well, like, no, no, they, they like write stuff or whatever, okay. you know, or their patreons. So then, like, um, so then they will clip those moments and be like, "Look, he's like such a piece of shit. Like he." fucking hates trans people or right, whatever, right, which right. is always hilarious when they say that. Um, and um, I, that's actually me doing housekeeping. Like I, I'm trying to make sure that the community that I, uh, that I've built for so long that I've built together with the members of this community, it represents certain values and doesn't, uh, behave in a manner that I think is like not good. And the flip side is it's impossible to do that at the size. You, I, I can't even do that now. So I know you can't do it. And so it becomes, I, mean, like I still this. try. Yeah, I no, mean, no, you should, you should still try. It, it reminds me, um, fuck, I had it in my head and I lost it as soon as you stopped talking. Um, or an example of something you did like, so Umar Johnson came on breakfast club, like, six months ago. And as soon as Umar pops up, everybody, everybody white has content about him. You know, that I, I've, I just mentioned Umar Johnson for real. Like the first time, like a month ago. I video. call him Dr. Umar, but maybe it's well, because I respect you, you him a little Dr. bit, Umar. a little bit more than you do. It's <laughs> well, weird. You know, his, his PhD was in question for a long time, but well, it is, not by it is me not because I trust him. Uh, you, see, you, you're doing good. You're doing <laughs> good. This is, this is no, no, it's good, 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 good job there. But so no, but no, for real though, I remember watching your version of a reaction to that video and several other versions. And once you got past the memeing, right, I was like, oh, this is a good take. And, and, and so it was funny because and if you don't get past the memeing, which is necessary because you're talking about Umar Johnson, yeah, you don't get that take. But that's kind of like the, the weird space that I don't know. I'm not going to just say I'm in, but like is developing – around me the you know air quotes cornbread tube yes i've and yeah we we all are making content explicitly about like black shit but also within a like one of the criticisms i get a lot is my my audience is predominantly white which i don't know if that's true maybe it's 50 50 at this point it depends yeah. on which video i just dropped right like my last the video i dropped before this past one like i changed the thumbnail explicitly to cater to a black audience and they came for the video but like, if you are black and you're doing anything in the public sphere at a certain level, if you're successful, your audience is predominantly black. I mean, predominantly white. Yeah, that, because, unless you're Tyler yeah, Perry. Yeah, exactly. You know and so it becomes impossible to thread these needles on a regular basis. Um, 
And so I think the thing that if, if I had to say, if I have to, so I, so I don't get punched by a handful of people. The thing that I know a lot of black leftists making content want is to be in the seat I'm in. You know what I'm saying? It's to share, not just like, obviously not everybody's coming to Cali, coming to the crib, but like to be put on in the zeitgeist because it's impossible to get here. I got here out of luck and in a handful of black films. Shout out to, uh, what, what, which, which camera are we on? Uh, that's the one. The other ones are for the uh, podcast. Oh, okay. Shout yeah. out to Khadijah and Bo. Shout out to uh, T Noir. Shout out to, uh, I'm going to give my shout outs real good while, while, while we Yeah, on. go ahead. Also, get a little bit closer to the microphone because, like, everyone is saying that you're not. Uh, I left this audio. I mean, I'm, yeah. known for that. I'm not known for my technical expertise. His noise gate is off, chat. There's not much more I can do. I'm, I'm, I'm going to come closer. I'm not used to it. Right, yeah. All right, right up on it. Uh, shout out to BP who wanted me to mention that he, he, he made it. He, so he did the thing. He put you on a cover of a, of a video, right? The video itself actually is relatively praising of you. Um, he has a good critique of the online left as a whole in that there's too much effort being put into, um, what's the word I want to use? He, he would say there's too much effort being put into what he would call purity testing. I'm not going to use that phrase so as to not get punched, but I get his overall point, which is mm -hmm. the thing that has always bothered me since I've been here. I've only been here a couple of years, right? The thing that bothers me about the online left is how uh, reactionary the non-reactionary people are. Like people that people say, "Oh, sounds reactionary," right? And you and they can clip you and have you have your moments, of course. Mm -hmm. But like then, like on Twitter, the wrong uh, moment, the wrong uh, uh, tweet, or just a question from like I've seen people in my sub tweets say, "Hey, what does this mean?" And it's like open season. And like, to me, that's reactionary, you know what I'm saying? And so like, like to kind of pull, have you, have you read a, or heard of elite capture? Olafemi Taiwo? Uh, I think, wait, that's I, actually one of the books that, uh, uh, Lowell overruled brought over, uh, when I had him on it's, it's, for me to read. Yeah, I would, I would read it now. There's, you know, criticism to be made, but he makes a big point about how, the nature of identity politics has created like this fertile ground for just bullshitting on Twitter, essentially. But it it's not just Twitter. It also happens in academia and it happens in like political spaces. And so this, this ramble is all getting back to the point that the only way to like avoid certain criticisms is to not say shit. Or yeah. to not care as much about how that take wasn't 100% on point, if that makes sense. Yeah, I'm on the second side of that where I'm just like, um, I mean, I, I definitely make an effort to clarify my positions. And and it's usually through repetition. Like, if you're in here long enough, it's impossible for you to think that, like, I, you know, have uh, reactionary perspectives. But... As far as uh, as far as like the way I'm perceived by a broader audience that actually doesn't watch me at all, mm -hmm. I know it's not going to be good because I have like dedicated fan bases yeah. uh, that have gone on for many many years and actually have uh, like made money off of clip chimping me and like making me look bad and and claiming that I don't believe the values that I actually uh, present right. that I actually advocate for so. No matter what happens, like I just have a, a massive uh, base of haters that are always looking for any opportunity to shit on me. So I'm just like, yeah, people are just, you know, I'm not going to be everyone's cup of tea. People are always going to fucking misunderstand what I'm saying. So I'm just going to have fun with it. Yeah, I, and I'm, I'm getting to that point because the re, the and we talked about this when I when I way back at the drama video, right? Which and and that's a perfect example because like I was so excited about the takes you had in the video, but then like literally the day after the video drop was uh, the wizarding game discourse. And oh so, yeah. And that was a perfect example of like, okay, on one end I get, I, I thought it was weird how you became the focal point of that. Right. Even though I didn't agree with your overall, like your goal there, because mm -hmm. my thing is always, I'm going to like, what, what are y'all, what, what do these people that whose issue I don't have a direct connection to, what do they need me to do? That's what I'm going to do. So, right. So there's that. But then there's also if that becomes like steak for content, that becomes rich for content. Mm 
Yeah. And, and then it becomes this like never ending cycle of reaction videos to the take, which is taking away from the whole point of addressing the problem of the individuals affected by that game. You know, mm -hmm. I, I agree. What's the, what's the dog's name? Kaya. Kaya. Uh. And so I was, I, I made a video where I kind of spelled this out and I was like, you know what, if I make this video, it's going to be about, it is going to become FD versus Hassan. And it's going to get away from the trans folks in my community expressing their issues with JK Rowling and transphobia, et cetera. And like, it's it's just this impossible balancing act of doing the things that one you know for me feed my children right that 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 this is my job, but also if we're serious about the politics, our role is almost explicitly for manufacturing the attention economy to be going towards the things that we care about and that require that attention. Yeah, that's why I try to weaponize that all the time like and try to make a valuable lesson out of like controversies even mm. controversies surrounding myself i've moved away from doing it for controversies surrounding myself because i, r I recognize that like anytime i pay any attention to it that it further uh emboldens a, a base of mm. of uh not necessarily construct yeah and it's never constructive criticism it's always disingenuous yeah so I I have moved away from that entirely, but um, anytime there is like some real drama or, or anything like that happening, I try to not leave it at just like, here's my take on this, but this is why uh, it matters. This is why I'm talking about it and try to like uh, tag it along with like uh, some structural analysis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my question, which goes back to a conversation we had a minute ago, how are you, how do you do this? Like, aside from being insane, which you told me before. Yeah. But like, like, oh shit, Bernie Sanders just scared the fuck out of me. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, that's, how, that's how I do it. <laughs> He's just watching me all day. I mean, you know, I guess, you know, no meetings, Bernie makes sense. But like, explicitly though, like, when you, a better question I think I had, I was thinking about on the way here is, how long, can I get one of these? Uh, These waters got any um, ones? Hold on, I'll grab you a, I'll grab you a water. Do you want anything else? I have a lot of sodas. No, no, just water. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm trying. It's all diet sodas. That's that's even worse. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right. Well, I mean, I just we're just gonna do the water. Here. A little bit, a little bit. Okay. Hold on. All right. Let me get nosy. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm rocking. Uh, you know, I'm in L.A. Uh, Hassan, L.A. is kind of trash. Is this a uh, LA is kind of trash, Hassan. I'm I'm a little um. You want, do I need to leave now? Is this it? Is this British burn? Oh, but I do want to talk about who. I can't wait till you come back. I do want to talk about something, and this is a transition. Something I really wanted to speak on when you get back. Um, yeah, but I decided I was gonna try to rep Los Angeles a little bit. Um, so I wore System of a Down shirt. Indeed, appreciate it. Appreciate it. Big as the space I have, there's still it still gets cramped sometimes. It's it's so wild. My literally, I got I I had one video go viral. I got on Twitter after that because I said I guess this is what I supposed to <clears throat> excuse me, what I'm supposed to do now. The first thing I ever heard about you was this house, and after hearing about it for the last three four years and coming to it, and this is no shade. This is a normal ass fucking. <laughs> That's what everybody <laughs> says. Every time, every time people come to my house, it's it literally the exact same response. Like I was trying to buy a house early this year. It didn't go through, but like, I don't want people to have seen the house I was about to buy, which has cost less because it's in Georgia. Right. So yeah, like, money is relative uh, according to space, but like, this is a normal ass. It, it, it like going back to the anti fandom shit. Is this is just like I have I have uncles. you will never be able to describe it to people though they they literally in their minds have like turned it into in their minds they've turned it into like a a, a mega mansion like a chateau with it's, a fucking moat like it's a nice house it's a really nice house it's a nice house and it's in a in a, it's in a nice neighborhood which is why it's so expensive <laughs> it's not you're right it's not in a nice neighborhood but it's in a neighborhood that is expensive Ooh, for sure what I just do I just fucked that up no I. 
I alarms that turned on on its own. Uh, one of the TikToks that scared me. Yeah, um, I, you know, I, you may be on the list after we talk. Um, just keeping it 100, which if you are, aren't already. Oh, I've, I'm, I'm on some lists, I think. Yeah. Um, you flew this man out to gaslit us into shutting about your mansion. Fuck you, fake commie. Yeah, see, like these are. So that's actually a great take because that's a joke from a, you know, 18 month subscriber. Okay. And okay. I think originally that's how it started. Mm -hmm. it, it started as like jokes inside of this community because we meme a lot, right? It's, it happens. I mean, I'm live like 10 hours a day. Uh, but. Basically, it devolved into, like, my haters taking it seriously. Like, Hassan doesn't pay his editors. Hassan uh, lives in a mega mansion. And at first, we were, like, just joking about it. Mm -hmm. And then people literally took it seriously and decided, like, oh, no, that's actually real. And then half of it was, like, people who knew that it wasn't real but didn't care because it was, like, oh, we get the shit on the e-celeb that I fucking despise for one reason or the other. Mm -hmm. And then the other half was, like, onlookers who are well-intentioned who don't really understand it and they just like kind of see shit out of context or see other people shitting on me and go oh yeah i guess he's a bad guy yeah it's, it's a you know and this is not to like this, I, I didn't come on to, to to absolve you as as the the no i mean you the, don't have to I, uncle but like it is a weird like the one thing that i've, I've kept in mind as we've talked is like the the otherworldliness of the space we occupy as fake celebrities. You know what I'm saying? Like no res we have we have no real resources or access to like the protective elements of of celebrity. Yeah. We are and we also aren't like uh removed. Like we're not yeah. multiple layers removed from our audiences or like the average person in the way that like an actual celebrity is. Yeah. Like the irony is like because of the nature of the content that we create it's it's constant communication uh, and and constant feedback, which makes you very accessible. And just like you mentioned, the Hogwarts drama is a perfect example of this. Like because I'm the most accessible person, you can't fucking tell J.K. Rowling to kill herself because she's not gonna do it. She's a billionaire, and she only gets on Twitter to just be like transphobic. Yeah. Um. And, uh, and but you can get mad at me. You can't get mad at like the transphobic state legislatures all around the country. You can't do anything about it, understandably, because like they're just they're not even operating on on any sort of like uh, uh, interest to to win elections. Even it's like who are they doing half of these? Uh, who are they pushing half this legislation for? Like nobody fucking fully understands it. But me, on the other hand, I am an incredibly accessible, easy to attack target that will give you the feeling of solidarity and the feeling of like other people coming on to, to, to join your crusade. The, so it feels productive. The celebrity works. Uh, it works against us in that regard, but, but here's the other thing though. And you know, to be, you know, honest, like you also have to have a responsibility with the platform. Right. And it's something I just fully started learning you know, a couple of months ago, I won't say the person's name, right? But I, I, I did a video about another creator's shitty video. And I didn't think to myself, and like, I was like, I really want this take to be out there. So I left the video out. And it didn't occur to me that even if my fan base wasn't about to go like dog pile that person, I put the green light on that person as, as right for critique. Mm -hmm. And so next thing you know, there's like five different critique videos about this individual and everything's getting blamed on me. I'm like, I didn't, I didn't do half of this shit, but I was like, oh, but I kind of started the shit. And so like you lose control of your actual like voice. Like as soon as you say, I, 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 I think about like, you know, Spider-Man, the, the night he becomes Spider-Man and then he opens the door the next day and he rips it off the hinges like that's kind of the area we're in. And yeah. so what you have to learn is right. With great power comes great responsibility. With great power comes responsibility. Fuck. I'm going to get drugged for this appearance because <laughs> 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 that uncle shit is not going to die after this, but no, but for real though, you have to like, like you Hassan as long as uh, you know, you have to say, all right, this person just says something out of pocket these people said something out of pocket or this topic, this area is, I, I gotta, I gotta, Ooh, I got a strong take on this. And then you got to go through like seven filters. 
about like not so much filtering out like what is the right thing to say to, for the perfect like non-offensive whatever but for for as the chat goes down the uh the which which one of these motherfuckers is gonna do the dumb shit is, is it you well bean some, finder sometimes sometimes there's people in here that are like hate watching there's a lot of people that are hate watching that will literally act like they're your fans and go and do cr crusades on behalf of you in an effort to try to get you to, to try to get other people to hate you. Mm -hmm. So like it, the, the mania only gets worse. Uh, it's not like, uh, you know, anything you can imagine that like some psychopathic individual would do, mm -hmm. uh, people, uh, do regularly. <laughs> uh, but, I can't imagine your idea. Yeah. I mean, at that my point, so wow, but yeah, like, at that point it's just like, you know, I just, I, I've just grown accustomed to it. You know what I mean? And I think ultimately the real reason why I, no matter what happens, I don't give a shit is because Kaya's not eating the shelf guys. She's eating uh, a thing that I put there. It's a frozen treat for her. That's what she's licking. Um, no matter what happens, the reason why I, I let it kind of like brush past me is because when I started this at the Young Turks, uh, one, I was working under someone, so I had, like, no control over my life, no control over my content, no control over my IP. Um, but I also only got negative feedback because TYT was already well hated, like, 2014, 2015 Gamergate era. And I saw the entire space is occupied by neck-bearded fucking losers who were reactionary as fuck. Um, and I never really thought I would get to this level of success that I got to. Mm. I never thought that I would see massive content creators openly, you know, advocating for progressive policies and whatnot. Most of the time, uh, progressive content creators, I think, in the early age of the, you know, Gamergate uh, era. They were getting they, murdered out here. They were, not, they were not openly talking about their politics. Even if they were progressive in their personal lives, they kind of just, like, didn't really say anything. A lot of big progressive content creators still don't actually... Uh, get into politics all too much regardless but it's the environment was certainly it, almost entirely hostile mm -hmm. with very little uh, counter to that and then like bread tube came around and you know all of these communities started growing online as a as a counter to all of that movement so now having someone like myself be one of the largest uh, twitch streamers on the planet who exclusively talks about politics from a like straight up as left as you can get perspective right i i i never take it for granted i always uh have that to fall back on where i think to myself like well i do have a massive community no matter what yeah you know what i mean and that's the and so like that's interesting so as i as i'm sitting here i'm trying to pay attention to the chat but like literally i cannot process no it's better that you don't trust me <laughs> it's literally better that you don't because but, but this is also this is like the force or some shit. This, this is a powerful uh, thing to have access to, even as it sometimes seeks to destroy you. Cause I think about um, like a cat black who was like making content or, uh, at that time who was getting murdered, even as bread who was growing, it wasn't like growing around her. And I never, I don't remember the sister's name. She did like, you remember this old videos, like a uh, white people be like, she was a dark skinned sister. She had like a big, at the time she had a big, like curly Afro. Oh, I can't remember her name. Um, but like for them, like th they're out of here, you know what I mean? Because of that same thing you're talking about. And so like Francesca Ramsey, Francesca Ramsey. Thank you. Thank you. Francesca Lay. She's, she's, she's still making, she just popped back up on tip, uh, TikTok. And when, yeah, that's her. And when I dubs said his bullshit, Oh, let me phrase it. When I Dub said his apology and other people were like, I Dub's don't apologize, she made a point to talk about how, like, y'all don't understand what their standpoint hey, was friends. like um, at the time. I don't know if she's a, uh, yeah, so four years. Yeah, that, that, indi that space was so awful. Like, <laughs> I, I mean, I was in, the, and obviously, like, I'm not, um, I wasn't even there. Like I was, yeah, I, I mean, was still watching <laughs> yeah. nostalgia critic. <laughs> a lot of, a lot of people, a lot of people had, uh, you know, a, a personal journey as like, they also got sucked into that space and then they escaped it or moved on from it or demonstrated personal growth. Um, but back then 
I definitely was in the fucking crosshairs of that shit. I mean, I'll give you an example right here. Let's look up the Young Turks, Jordan Peterson, Hassan Piker, transphobic, right? Because, because look, look, I mean, here, uh, I made a video sarcastically titled Jordan Peterson is not a conservative transphobe. And this video came out four years ago. Well, even more than that. Um, but yeah, okay. It was almost five years ago, December 30th, 2018. I wrote this video and I made this video. It has 2.9 thousand likes, 146,000 views. I can't see the dislikes now, but I'm pretty sure that the dislikes greatly outnumber. All right, piece of the dislike button. Yeah. Fuck the dislike. And, Real fuck the dislike. Oh, button. yeah. See someone uh, fizz in the chat says 6.1K dislikes. If we look at it, wow. if we look at the comments, and these are one month ago, obviously, which is uh, why they're going to be greatly different. Damn. But if you look at the fucking top comments, okay, from... I love to see the intellectuals come out in the TYT comment section. I, I said four years ago, it's, it's amazing how mischaracterized this man gets. Whatever you think about him, he said repeatedly when asked, he'll use the pronoun he, she like back then it was very obvious that he was transphobic, but people, but people just to refused to recognize that he was. And uh, people were going fucking crazy over it. Like they, they, anytime anyone said anything like this, they would get absolutely ripped up to shreds. Yeah. And, uh, the reason why I'm showing this is not to be like, look how fucking right I was even five years ago. It but is funny to see how Peterson has completely validated every uh, attack, uh, unfair attack that the left has made about him in the last yeah. like year. And all his fans just went quiet. Like nobody's came forward and been like. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but but even then, this is five years ago and he was still like, you know, this he, is him. A ridiculous person. This is him at like a Turning Point USA conference. You know what I mean? Where he was like a keynote speaker and people were still refusing to recognize that. And it just like, it sucked because back then everyone was always like, oh, you fucking, you're a piece of shit. You're a you're soy liptard. You're attacking this like profoundly beautiful centrist mind who only has the best intentions and like wants what's best for society. He's an intellectual. Who the fuck are you? Um, and, and, and then I didn't have a base of support, but now I do yeah. some of which, uh, it's, who used to be sword. fans of Jordan Peterson. So that's, that's what keeps me going that. And also the top of the hour ad breaks, which I forgot to ran, uh, which I forgot to run for $5 or free with Twitch prime or by getting gifted sub. Here's a three minute ad break now. Okay. Let's continue. Cool. Are we? Do we keep talking? Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, because okay. mo most people, most people are subscribers anyway, so they don't really, you know. So uh, I want to spin back to L.A. being trash, except for one thing that is going to segue into some. I really. Well, want this to talk sucks because you're only seeing the worst. Like L.A. is only good Why, when the weather the is fuck good. Is the sun though? Yeah, L.A. is <laughs> only good when the weather's good, and L.A.'s weather's been shit this year, like insane. Go, it's like Seattle. Yeah, I I left the South, right. And I, I, we got on the plane, a four-hour ride with a seven- and a ten-year-old, and we made it. And we wake up the next morning, and I'm like, "Where's? why hasn't the sun gotten here? This is, this is, I came here. For, I have a gift for your kids, by the way. Uh, I don't know if you'll, I don't know if you'll appreciate no, it or we'll, take them. We'll pre as long as it's not some of this nicotine gum. We have to talk about no, this. No, it's, it's, uh, <laughs> it might be worse. I don't know what your perspective is, but it's uh, Mr. Beast. Oh God! He always we're we're managed by the same uh, management company, and they always send me like his new shit. So I have like They'll boxes of Nerf guns, Mr. Beast branded Nerf guns, oh, and God. boxes of Feastables chocolate. I'm going to drag you as soon as I leave for doing this to me. I'm just saying. Well, now that it's on camera, <laughs> now that they know that I offered it, it, you will be the bad guy. I'm not allowing them to watch. I'm, I'm, I have not allowed them to watch anything I do, partially because. I we have a weird thing with like YouTube with my kids because of like let me not let me not throw too much shade at Mr. Beast because Mr. Beast is also like Nebula Gang to an extent, um, but you know Mr. Beast critiques mm -hmm. at all right. Um, but hold on, I want to say this thing about L.A. Yo, I've seen one police car since oh, yeah. I've gotten here. Yeah, well, it depends on what neighborhoods you're in. That's why. But so it still blows my fucking mind because. I'm in. You will not get a ticket. You will not get a a, a, a moving violation. You get a parking ticket, one hundred percent. But it is relatively hard to get a 
like speeding ticket in the fucking uh, greater Los Angeles area. I didn't see police in San Diego. Excuse me. Now, like, but no, no, like, I'm saying this because, like, I frequent the nicer areas of Atlanta, mm-hmm. and I did not, like, I, 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 it really, like, hit me hard last night when I heard a police siren, and I, I, I tapped my wife, and she, I was like, yo, have we heard police at all since we Well, it's here? also crime is legal. What, what, uh, explain what's going on because we made, like, we made crime legal here, so is that, we is voted. That what, what, I mean, sh- surely we could do that in Georgia. Oh um, yeah, but no, like what? How was that? Because you know we you know we got the cop city shit happening in Atlanta. Yeah, they just raided an anarchist um yeah organization and charged with all kinds of wild shit. They've got terrorism charges on like thirty people now. Yeah, they they they're really weaponizing the RICO charges down there for like. Yeah. Suspiciously, yeah. only black adjacent causes. Yeah, it's 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 a it's an interesting situation. Where's the Fannie Willis uh, Rico charge on Donald Trump? Where when is that coming? Oh, we, we we're gonna let's we're gonna get back to hogs. Actually, I'm gonna get back to hogs. But I wanna but I gotta like I gotta speak to this though. I literally can't leave my house in Atlanta. I don't live. I live in a uh, uh, middle class, gentrifying neighborhood, right? So like. There's an excuse for police to be around because white gentrifiers call the cops all the time mm-hmm. on random black people. But if I go to almost any neighborhood in Atlanta on the north side, which is where there's less crime, um, generally speaking, when there's there's less people of color, generally speaking, there's still a million police. And it was normal to me to like see a five or six police officers going anywhere in Atlanta to see five or six patrol cars at any given ride. And when it hit me that that was normal to me when I got here, I almost got sad because I was like, yo, I have acquiesced to the police being an ever present. Like when we talk about, <coughs> um, I, I don't know who I was. I, I was talking to um, Skip Intro about uh, Copaganda and Spider-Man. And, you know, the, the argument that the right will use about police is that if you flood an area with police, crime goes down, which is, which is only true through like the most tenuous reach of an argument. And that if, if I'm standing next to my son, he might not pick his nose. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like the, uh, th- from an authoritative standpoint, it air quotes works, but you get like the way my sons, like my 10 year old acts around police is it would break your heart because he knows what the police mean in general, but especially in Atlanta. And so like, the fact that that was a normal reflexive like energy in me that the police are just always around. So stay on code as much as possible. And they get here and I hear one siren in 72 hours. It was like, holy shit. I, I, y'all, I will trade y'all. You got like, used to a police state is what you're saying. Basically, basically. Yeah. And, and, that, and how it happens. And that's the crazy thing about like the cop city shit. There's still a, you know, 40% of the people are still voting yay on Cop City. They don't understand what it could be is the thing that breaks my heart. They don't, they don't have a, they don't have a clue that you don't have to have police on every corner to feel safe. And we still don't feel safe. And there's still crime all over Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, yeah. It's almost like it's uh completely unmarried to police presence and, has a lot more to do with uh, socioeconomic conditions. Uh, but, you know, what do I know? It's not like Los Angeles is, like, wealthier overall either. It's just that there's still plenty of proximity to wealth from uh, those who don't have it, which is usually, uh, and, and crime manifests as a consequence of your material conditions, obviously. Right. So that, that is usually what crime, in the way that we understand it, occurs. But, like I said... Um, I think the reason why you don't see a lot of cops around in Los Angeles in comparison to other places, which you're right, I do take that for granted, I do forget, is maybe it's because it's like more spread out too than other places. Because LA is so vast. Possibly. I, but it's still, I don't know. I'd have to, I'm, 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 I'm going to legit do some, this it sparked a video idea. Um, so I'm going to do some research and figure it out because like we got off the, we, we rolled through, you know, I guess, uh, like South LA on the way here. And then like we got off cause we had to do a bathroom break on Alvar- Alvarado 
don't know. I don't know. Probably a place you. It's a place. Like, looking around, it's probably a place you wouldn't go uh, pretty pretty often. But like even still, it doesn't feel like even like median income neighborhoods in Atlanta. You know, it doesn't feel like you know the places where. Um, uh, you know, young slime life supposedly like it's so funny. Like people talk about uh, YSL and them um, getting the Rico charge for what they've been doing off Cleveland Avenue. I don't live too far from Cleveland Avenue. I, I, like a lot of people I know, there's Chick Fil A's and like night. Like it's not it, the way that Atlanta is. It's not the way DJ of, Academics presents. Oh it. my fucking god! I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna drag DJ. Wait, that's he. He said he's a fan of mine and Tim Pool, so. Yeah, clearly, clearly, clearly. Yeah, no, like Cleveland Avenue. Like, there's a set. There's literally like, if this street is Cleveland Avenue, right? If your desk, this long as that's Cleveland Avenue, from here to here, is where YSL was probably doing most of their dirt. Like this one section. And if you keep going this way, you hit hit other neighborhoods with completely different lifestyles and energies. And same thing going this way, right? If you put, if you take the ninety million dollars they're doing for Cop City. And you put those resource, that money into this area, you transform this area within within a, a decade. You completely transform it. Or, you know, Coca-Cola, Nike, Lockheed Martin, Chick-fil-A, goddamn, whomever um, can, you know, build a, a police uh, training facility that's going to just be kind of like a, a boondoggle for them to get, you know, food contracts you know, bring in the Israeli uh, police force, bring in New York, bring in y'all. That's, that's, that's what, that's what they need. Uh, the American police force is not ruthless enough. They, they need a refresher course yeah, yeah, on, of course, on how to kill 14 year olds, you know, from a distance. Last shout out that we can do some, I'm going to do some hog watch. I've never done the actual reaction shit. Mm -hmm. um, shout out to, oh, let me make sure I get this right. So, I did a stream a couple of weeks ago. There's numbers on this, by the way. Apparently, police employment officers per capita rates for U.S. cities. Um, and uh, do, 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 what is this? Governing calculations. New York has 42.3 per 10K population. Um, Los Angeles has 24. Chicago has 44 almost. I wonder where is Atlanta? See, thirty five. Did he? Did oh, I skip it? Could go on. All right, Damn. All right there, thirty five. Yeah. So yeah, it, it's measurably and demonstrably larger police presence. Yeah. And it's it, it you and you feel it, or you don't feel it. You go fucking numb to it, which is like like genuinely, I'm yeah. <laughs> getting upset because I'm thinking about. Like, you would just say New York was what, 43? Yeah, I mean, New York, you immediately so see we're, it. So we're 7%. Chicago lower. is sh like this actually. I've never been to Chicago. I'm, I'm from Chicago. Oh, okay. So I, I've never been to Chicago, but like that is unsurprising. So that makes sense, but it's all in one spot. Atlanta is maybe an eighth the size of Chicago, maybe one sixteenth the size of New York. And like and 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 literally nobody lives in the city, it's just the metro area, you know. So it's 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 just oh my fucking god, yeah, um, I, yeah. Not like make send that. Well, I, I'm gonna get this from you because I'm I'm, I'm yeah. gonna come back to this because that's it's it's so and we still have and Atlanta's a these are black, old too. This is from what, 20, what 2014. Atlanta's a is is the black mecca. All, all the shit I'm talking about, all the shit I'm talking about, we've had we haven't had a white mayor since the '70s. Mm -hmm. We have probably more black millionaires and business owners and academics, or whatever per capita than any other city in the country, if not world. We 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 have every thing you're supposed to have. Going back to this identity politics conversation, we have everything you're supposed to have to ensure that that type of shit does not happen. But what Atlanta does have is a lot of fucking corporate power. Everybody's got a headquarters there. Everybody, mm -hmm. everybody cuts checks. Everybody has, um, and then we have a, a combination of corporate power. And if you go 30 miles outside of Atlanta, you're basically going 50 years back in time. Yeah. So like the greater, infra, the greater political structure of the state wants what you just saw. Um, and so like, and, and like when people, you know, it's, it's a weird, you know, I'm trying to balance this shit, right? Because these are, these are, Issues I've dealt with, but the politics I'm new to um, because because you have such a black bourgeoisie class in Atlanta, 
you feel like, eh, you know, it is what it is. We're, we're doing good. We're getting money. You know, black excellence, Obama's in president, et cetera. You, 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 you throw in a Morehouse uh, uh, mayor, a mayor from Morehouse College who just got booed a couple of months ago at his alma mater over Cop City shit. And this shit just kind of goes. It just goes because these politics, politics going further left than the Democrats, have not been allowed to... Um, exist on the main stage and people get there, they get their, you know, they get their nice house and they say, all right, that's it. I got, I got mine. You get yours. You know oh. what I mean? Shout out to M Marty, whomever that went to Clark, you know, we got, we got to, we got to get in there. We got to get in there. Don't, don't worry about that. Um, <laughs> Killer Mike. Oh my fucking. I was, so hurt. I was about to say, speaking of, of, uh, uh, black bourgeoisie and their, uh, shifting perspective on black capitalism as an emancipatory factor. Um, what do you think about killer Mike? And I think that it kind of almost ties back to Clarence Thomas's perspective and how it shifted over the years as his politics have become more flushed out. What's scary about killer Mike. So here's the, here's the thing. Uh, I don't know if you watched um, my last two videos. They're, they're over two and a half hours altogether. <laughs> no, I have not. I've got some tick, uh, some shorts in there. Um, but no, so my last two videos were explicitly about this, the rant I just went on, which is like re-engaging, uh, black people as a whole with the, uh, the politics of the left, which is something that we've always had, but we've been disabused of, you know, for the last 60, 70 years. And so like Clarence Thomas is an early defector, right? Yeah. And so we we weren't worrying about Clarence Thomas way back when the Anita like I never forget like hearing about the Anita Hill shit and my, and being confused that my mother wasn't supporting the black man on TV because that was like, you know, second nature. Like black man on TV. Yeah. We in there. My mother's like she ain't she ain't give me details, obviously. I was like ten or some shit. But like I'm like, okay, right? But the thing is a killer Mike can come and speak that language and present that energy. He can name drop uh, Kwame Ture and uh, Franz Fanon and Fred Hampton and, ha and, and like name drop them. There's a video uh, name drop them in support of capitalism. Yeah. And it's like, Mike, what the, f what the fuck? And like, you've heard Mike, you know, throw some centrist shit in there before, but he is very clearly, been adopting not just a centrist, a right wing ethos, not just being pro capitalism, but like the political um, energy that he's been presenting. He 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 supported. Uh, I'm gonna take her out real quick, but while you still keep going, that's fine. Why, why, why you know why, why you out? I wanted to finish this shout out to. Uh, Come here, Kaya. So let me let me take over the the Hassan stream for a second. I am when's, Hassan. When's the last time a black person's been on your stream? Okay. Well, so as as I, as I hold this space well, for a second, you're, you're, yeah, you're, I mean, mafia, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Ole Ole is a uh, part of the part of the crew. Let me get this massage going again real quick. So. They're short. All right, so real quick, shout out to um, on a completely unrelated note, I did a stream a couple of weeks ago, y'all. Um, it is on my side channel, Signified B Sides, and I had as a guest uh, Aran Anal, who is a uh, uh, South Asian streamer. Uh, people call him the uh, Indian Hassan, which is I don't know how that works to be honest with you. Either way. Um, he brought to my attention that we talked about on stream the uh, uh, genocide in Sri Lanka that happened uh, in our lifetime, like in 2009. And I told him I would mention that. Oops, shit. I told him I would make sure I mentioned that while I was here. So please, if you can, go check that out on my b side channel. You can also follow him on Twitter. Um, ooh, shit. Because uh, bringing it full circle, the whole point of the role of a me or Hassan, from my perspective, is the pulpit, which is literally like kind of what we're in right now and bringing attention to shit that won't get attention from media outlets that are not interested in certain types of stories. Um, oh, okay. Somebody, uh, shout out to, uh, shit, shit's moving too fast. <laughs> 
Shout out to whoever just said uh, uh, subscribe to Arana now in the chat. Um, the 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 details on that uh, story are, is, are uh, not for the the weak of heart. So please check that out. Um, and he's just really trying to bring more attention to it because that that situation is uh, such a dire situation that uh, it's kind of just a start. Um, while I'm here, while we still waiting, shout out to shout out to Turb who just dropped a new video, dropped two videos this week. He, he shouldn't do that, but yeah, get them shits in. Shout out to John Lewis who dropped this week. Shout out to who am I missing? Let me check my shit. Let me check my shit. Let me check my shit. Oh, watch my new shit. Watch my new shit, which just dropped this Monday. Shout out to Black Power Media, who just interviewed um, uh, Cornell West this morning. Um, who else? Oh, shout out to Think Peace Drop Tribe, who just dropped some shit. Um, shout out to all my all my motherfuckers. I don't, you know, we gotta we gotta I gotta make sure I don't know how other niggas, I don't know how other folks do when they get here. But uh, my chat don't be this live. And I don't know how to turn this off. Okay, good. So, so yeah, we got to make sure people get the, the numbers and, and they need. Um, and I think that's it. I think I've ran. Oh, no, we were talking about Killer Mike's ass. Yeah. I don't know what to make it. I, I don't know what to make of Mike. His story is kind of uh, murky because Mike's dad is a cop. I'm sure that's well known. Yeah. Mike went to Morehouse, but he dropped out, according to him, to sell drugs. Um. Mike is clearly very intelligent and Mike's been overtly an agitator. Like Mike was the, Mike was the first rapper. I think to call out Obama, right. Which yeah. may not seem like a big deal now, but at the time was a huge deal. Yeah. No, you know, he might've been after Lupe, but Lupe was already like, you know, on the edge of, of like discourse uh, at the time. Yeah. And so like you, you get those details, right. He's got a whole song called Reagan. You know what I mean? Where he's breaking shit down. He's, he's bringing, a uh, 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 political ethos to hip hop mainstream kind of, which is like probably reason why he wasn't as mainstream that hadn't been seen since like the mid nineties with public enemy and shit. And then, you know, he gets, he starts running the jewels. He gets really popular and he keeps that energy. Got fucking songs called kill your masters. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, this is, <laughs> um, that, I mean, I said that it's killing Mike 2013, put uh, kill your masters, 2023, pull your pants up. And like, I don't know what happened. I think it's just money. That's the thing that scares no. me about. You think so? It's not like he got more successful since then though. I think he had, I think run the jewel. Like you don't understand. I mean, you may not understand how broke rappers are. No, I do. I have okay. I have rapper friends. Okay. There. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, another. Uh, okay. Twenty four K Golden was the last uh, guest I had on. No clue who that he's is. He's not broke though. Okay. He's oh, I, I, hopefully not with a he's, name like Twenty Four K Golden. He's doing. He's doing fine. Um. But yes, yeah, so I don't. I, I can't really call it with Mike because Mike earned credibility among a radical population of fan fandom for a reason because he said the right shit, and then. It started in 2020 when, you know, I gave him a pass for like say, telling people to stop riding because like, what are you supposed to do in front of like the police and the mayor on TV? You can't say, you know, burn the motherfucker to the ground, even if you're killer Mike. Right? Well, he also, this actually came, I know I had Trey on a month ago. It was with, uh, Golden was on as well. Anyway, listen. That, that was, that, that was not I, meant to like be a debate. Yeah, I know. Everyone is <laughs> literally like, that, that, this is a very white community as you already know. So immediately, especially uh, a very white community that speaks on, uh, you know, police brutality or, or reparations, black emancipation all the time. Uh, oftentimes a conversation, oftentimes a conversation devolves into like name all of your black friends. And I, I hate that because it's like it's not it's not a position that's going to make you look <laughs> normal or good, which is what I try to instill upon people all the time which is just be normal, like be a normal person, yeah. treat other people like they're normal humans and not like black first and then a human being. Well, that's the, that's the problem with the online left. A big problem that's been cropping up recently as like, you know, cornbread soup has become a, a, a thing is like for, you know, because like going back to cat black, Francesca, et cetera, a lot of them were kind of like sidelined, right. Or niched. 
And then like black leftist YouTubers have been around since that time, but it's been almost, almost predominantly dominated by black women for black women audiences um, and academic audiences. And so when I popped up and I purposely started to find other black men, you know, cis hetero. Yeah. Finally, um, we need some fucking men in here. You know what I mean? What is this? What is this? Yeah. Hit it. That's what I'm talking about, dude. Um, but no, no, for real though, like bringing them in changed, <laughs> changed the energy. And then suddenly, if you are a debate guy that brings up white supremacists to debate them every six weeks, with well, fuck, six days to prove your anti-racism clout. And we say, no, you're kind of a clown. That creates like a conflict because blackness is a, uh, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a commerce in this space proving that you have black credibility with black people mm -hmm. is a way or credibility with, with anti-racism is a, uh, uh, economic, um, boon. And so like now it becomes like the, the running, uh, meme for me now is I am king of the blacks. So if I pop up in your video, then you're one of the good ones, which is not true. The one is there's no such thing as a good one. You're, you're all bad in my mind. I just want to be very clear about this to, for the chat. Um, but also, I'm not the end all be all for those discussions. In fact, I'm I'm mid compared to a lot of my peers who you know don't have who who haven't hired editors yet. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um. So, but yeah. So so be normal is no no. I said to say keep doing that because what we need more of we, we need less white pundits talking about black issues without black people present and more white pundits talking explicitly to white people about white shit and like doing white shit better. We don't need fuck white people. We don't need that. That's, that's still as, as much as I would like to say that. And as much as I say that when the cameras aren't on me, that is this, that is still reactionary. We most, we more so need like, yeah, this is the, you're, you're actually uh, basically addressing something that I say all the time, but I usually uh, talk about this to, the trans community when I'm whenever I'm having this discussion when I talk about transphobia I'm not talking to trans people mm. this is something I've said so many times like you're trans you already know how fucking dog shit it is you know what I mean like I'm talking to transphobic people who could potentially change their minds and the same goes for every issue I speak of when I speak on black issues I'm not speaking to black people even though because of the predominantly uh, white centric uh, white supremacist public education structure in America. There might be black chatters that learn new things when they come in here about black history in general. Um, Cause there's always people who are like, this shit is not like, about. like, like the move bombing is a great example. It's like, anytime I bring it up, there's like, what the fuck I'm black. I had no idea that was a real thing that happened in America in like, you know, not that long ago, but, um, but yeah, when I, when I speak on uh, black issues, it's not to black people, it's to white people. It's so that, you know, white people uh, understand uh, from a, I guess, like, you know, if you have any kind of uh, preconceived notions or biases, when you hear a white person say these things, it's, you know, it, it, it's, 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 it's more of, impactful. It, it's why I do, like, when I dabble in my manosphere shit, it's never for women in the audience. And it also means I speak a specific cadence of language. But so, but I also, as much as possible, have black women in the video or in the conversation to, to fill in those gaps. You know what I'm saying? And that's kind of like, it's, it's two discourses. There's the ideas, right, which is solid. And then there's the economy. And so, like, going back to, like, the white left, the white left, white li li liberals and, and leftists have been arguing with other white liberals and leftists about black people and trans people for like clout points and content for at least six, seven years. And it's like, I'm like the whole reason why I think we've made a ripple is it's like, Oh, there's actually black people having these conversations. Yeah. You know and it's like, at first I was really excited, but then I got frustrated about that because it was like, all right, listen, y'all, I'm not going to be teaching white people about racism with every other video. Y'all get like one video every three to six months. And then, and then, and then after that, I was like, you know what? Y'all not getting any more of these. <laughs> I'm talking about black Panther, both the, the movie and the actual movement uh, until further notice. Um, I was supposed to do a white rapper video this time last year. 
And it's now a running meme in my community that is that has never happened. White rapper video. There's this always new one, like Lil Mambu or whatever. You see that? Is that the one that was the, like the drill? The drill rapper dad. who's like super rich. I think he's like a hedge fund kid who like graduated from a fucking private school recently. Yeah, I saw that. I shit. follow all that stuff. It's yeah, that, no, please. I do. love I love and, white rappers. And you do the little Mambu takedown. That I, is that is for Hassan to do the <laughs> little Mambu takedown. If I talk about little Mambu. Smack the shit out of me. Even when I do my white rapper video, which is definitely happening this year. Yeah. Here, well, <laughs> now you're going to have to see it. Oh, it is. It's just like, apparently his, his dad owns a, like the actual, a, a, a record label or something. So I he's mean, like, is he hanging out with Lil Durk? Jesus Christ. I was that bad on my dick, didn't pay attention. Man, I fell down to my knees when the law came. Man, I fell down to my knees when the law came. Oh. Uh. <laughs> oh, <laughs> let me not say shit. Let me not say shit. <laughs> it's, uh. it's, it's it's no. Mm. I, I, and I and I. Mm. <laughs> I didn't mean to do this. I didn't even know this existed. I'm sorry. I didn't. I did not know that this existed. So, and the top line is bro eighteen casually friends with Dirk. No, he is fucking not. Bro, rich, cut a check. One hundred percent. That is, that is what happens there, and this has happened forever. And this is like, oh, I, we could talk forever about this, but I don't want to. I don't want to drop there's too one, much of this. There is one word you can't say. I can't say the n word. No, you. I can't, can't say the c word. Yeah, that is. I just, you know, this is this is broaching territory where that might be deployed. I'm just saying. Right. So you can't say I that. I will get banned. Word. We have developed within the black community a <laughs> list of slur slurs. Slurs. I have a pass. I don't know where it is. But. You, you, who the fuck gave you a pass? Nabisco, as a matter of fact. We Nab- thins. Who was? They gave you a, a, a oh a, a c word pass. What? Okay, I'm sorry. I thought what, it was not an n word. Okay, pass. I'm like I'm like I'm like I'm like we don't do that. That that what? is a myth. No, that's not anybody a- that is giving you an n word. White people in the chat. There's no such thing as an n word yeah. pass. Yeah, Nabisco. Nobody gave me- is coming to the cookout. The cookout is shut down <laughs> Nabisco, until socialism. Nabisco gave me the n word pass. <laughs> oh my fucking god. No, where I wonder where it is. No, that's that's hilarious though. That's how to do the shit. That's how yeah. To do the that's shit. how that's how silly that was. That like a like a multinational, like a major corporation gave uh, felt comfortable, the like felt comfortable <laughs> making a joke about it. And there's still motherfuckers, there's still motherfuckers online who are like, Hassan is the most racist man in the 19th century. What you know, the only real racism, the racism that truly matters in America right now, is the racism against white people. Um, yeah, which, well, no, uh, we're we're I've in agreement. Been responsible for in the last couple of weeks. Uh, Me too. I'm I'm doing my very best. My um my anti miscegenation uh era, according to Twitter. Oh no. Um, well, see, this is like, this, <laughs> I don't even. Oh God. You know, I'm not gonna get into it because I, I that was the last straw for me. I have I've oh, tweeted maybe God. twice since then. I let my wife take over Twitter after that. Oh shit no, I was don't. Like, you know what? I'm gonna keep. I cannot take like dealing with these people. And I can't stop myself from engaging, so I need to take the tools out of my hands. Because I'm never going to make another video about the shit, right? The, yeah. I have too many other good ideas, but I will keep tweeting if if people keep talking crazy to me. Yeah. And so I was like, all right, I got to get it out of my hands. Because you did the thing. You you got in the discourse again, though. Yeah, you, yeah. You but, got and, involved and, in the discourse. It, you didn't just like let it fly and then and then just go, all right, not addressing it. Yeah, yeah. Which it, is really hard. It's it really, is. really hard. It is. It's, it's damn near impossible because, and I'm like, like no shade, I'm too old for this shit. Like, yeah, and I like, feel that way too. And people, like, and I'm like, I find you said it in the fucking video, or you said it in real life. I felt so stupid because it was the realest shit anybody said to me. He was like, I put a record scratch there in the moment. Yeah, you oh. were like, you, you know, I said, I, I try to explain to my wife why insert debate pervert here is getting to my nerves, and she's like, dude, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. And, <laughs> yeah, and you and you cut me off and said, hey, your wife is right, and I'm like, oh, yeah, you're right. Uh, yeah, why, why did I need Hassan to tell me that shit? I mean, well, there, I do have a lot of experience with that. To true, be fair, true, I have true. I have many many years of experience on that front. Right. Where like I I have a yeah I I have a a like a barometer for that where I'm like 
like, could I explain this to like a normal relative of mine that is like out of touch with online culture? Right. And if the answer is like absolutely not, then I try to very aggressively move away from it, yeah. even though I'm the most stubborn motherfucker. The most stubborn motherfucker, and I, I have to like, you know, I, I, I have to come back and and keep fighting it for no reason. Yeah, yeah. That's what it. It was a bunch of white people explaining to me racism against black people and or interracial couples, and like it was the most bizarre. And I was like, all right, let me just pull out some data, and like here's a video, and like just send. And it was like, oh nope, that was stupid. And now now I'm done with Twitter forever. So, so no more tweets to me. I'm still lurking, of course, but like, yeah. Donald Glover's coming for you. Donald Glover's mad at me. Um, Wait, is he? I was just. Kidding. I don't know. So I'm, <laughs> I'm starting to make like I made I made my first um, Hollywood friend, uh, my first real friend outside of me. YouTube. Uh, no, no, no uh, you're my you're my first white friend. <laughs> um, and uh, and so I'm like, okay, because I was supposed to do an anti insert person's name here. I'm not going to say video when I hit 500k, and. Then before when I got to like 300K, I started thinking about, well, if I ever want to do anything in entertainment outside of YouTube, I maybe shouldn't talk shit about people that I, I'm going to like need to contract me for writing or some shit. So like I'm, I'm working on I'm working on redeveloping. I'm, I'm, I'm chilling the fuck out. So we're going to always it. good. I'm always smart. I'm, I'm, you also have to remember, like you have an audience of very different people and like. Uh, do you really want to no. introduce this person to your audience? Fucking you know what no. I mean? And that's, the, that, that's why I fucked up. That's how I, that's how I think about it, which is why I always like, I don't engage in fights when I know that like someone is very clearly rage farming. Yeah. Um, and they're doing it deliberately. And there's so many examples of this. Cause I did it for so long that I'm just like, yeah, no, it's not interesting. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to fucking take the bait. Um, I'll only do it if it's like, if it's worthwhile. That's where I fucked up, and and that's where because I got I'm getting cocky because I have like I started out my first handful of videos go viral, and I'm just pure bread to I'm bread to new black guy, so all my fans are white, right? All of them, every single last one, and like I I didn't feel I didn't like that at all, um, not just because of like you know obviously being a a, a black supremacist, but because uh, an anti white racist, but because it was like they're going to. I feel tokenized, right? Mm -hmm. I was like, I'm getting a lot of messages and emails and questions asking me about racism. That I've been like, you know, like 15 years ago, I may have answered that question for you. Right now, I'm just about to play mad. I'm not about to explain mm -hmm. this to you again. Watch my video again or some shit like that, right? Um, and and then, then I started getting money. And then I really felt uncomfortable because now I'm in, now I'm in, um, uh, are you familiar with the movie Bamboozled? No. Okay. Well, uh, long story short, now I'm in a space where I know I am being, I am selling my blackness. Yeah. Like there's a, there's an element. What, what, what little dirt just did? I, was just, I didn't. Hey, I didn't say it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what just happened. Um. Yeah. He just offered his clout and and street cred to Bull Mabu. Yeah. That's that's exactly what he did. And yeah. so like. White people in America will pay for access to blackness in, in certain in certain elements. And not all of it, just like a certain packaged, commodified version. And it's not even always, in my opinion, it's not even always like ill intent. In, no, Ill it's, they're just fucking excited. Yeah, they're, they want to learn. They want to understand. Uh, and I think that's where it comes from, too. Um, I think the, the reason why I get criticized a lot about like, oh, he's too comfortable uh, speaking on certain issues that he knows nothing about is because I think that there is a, uh, there is like a, a stereotype of like a person who speaks on social justice, who, uh, who definitely does say shit that's like completely out of pocket or has like legitimate disagreements that are, that are born out of like, uh, implicit biases or an understand like, or, or being, uh, socially uh, developed into uh, white supremacist fundamentals. So I think that's why like a lot of people go, Oh, he's doing that mm -hmm. whenever I like say something. So there, there's that. But like, again, is I made the joke about being like the first black person on, on the show, which I'm, I'm sure is not, but you, you, what you, now that, you know, now that you've been uh, christened okay by the King of the blacks, I need not be the last black leftist that, 
not maybe no. comes to the house, but like, well, you, you've actually done a couple of think piece. Shout out. Think these tribe. You've actually reacted to his stuff a couple of times. Um, but it's also dangerous because when you reacted to uh, T1J's joint positively, the fans still ran ran through. Um, yeah. But either way, as 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 you do that more, one, it will be just generally good because I don't like uh, it. It is it is just not good to be such a prominent voice. I'm talking about myself. I, it's not good that I'm such a prominent black voice in this space right now. It's not good for me personally, just my like health and, and like the way I carry that type of res- responsibility, but also we need, um, uh, you know, little bill, we need, uh, you know, uh, Khadija and Bo, we need cat black, like to, you see, you know, kill two birds. You, you get to ha- hash out, uh, issues about trans issues and black issues at the same time. We need, Oh, shout out to overthrow. Who, who want who wants to come up and and and, co- and converse with you like that combined with what you already do is not just like gonna shield you but it's also the best way to do it because now um now the take is refined by the explicit discourse of a person who's actually in the spot you know like I haven't made a video about I'm probably gonna make my first overt trans issues video later this year. And I've already got like people I'm going to talk to for it. And the reason why I haven't, I made a video about Dave Chappelle and I, I put a several trans women in it, but I, I made that because I really want to talk about Dave Chappelle. Right. And so I was like, all right, we can do this and it's cool. But when I get to like an explicit trans w- uh, women video, I could easily make five of those videos. They're all hit up 500,000 views within a month. I'll make all the money and I'll be the greatest ally in the world because of how shitty the reality is for trans women. But if I do that without bringing soul buddy on to t- have a conversation, right. Who's a small creator or bringing like a Jesse gender. And of course, maybe I'll talk to, you know, a bigger a trans creator. Then I've kind of, it's, it's the, 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 the fucked up part about this job is you, you're still in an attention economy. And so when I'm bringing attention to myself, to address someone else's issues, I have to share some of that capital. That is, that is like, that's personal capital. That's like, you know, clout. I have to share that with those folks a, a, a enough oh, shit. At least me personally, the whole reason cornbread tube is a thing. Cause I was like, y'all not about to give me all this fucking money to talk to these white people. And I'm, and I'm not gonna put, put other niggas on. Like I can't, I can't not do the way I'm built where I'm from. Maybe it's cause I'm old and I don't get what I was supposed to do, but like other mother and, and, and that's, and you've done that. Right. Like, I mean, I try to, but it's, it's oftentimes, uh, just usually it's laziness. Like yeah. if something is in, uh, within proximity, then like, I'll definitely do it. But if it's not, if it's out of reach, like I don't really usually go out of my way. Uh, in many circumstances, but then also the other is like, I do have a lot of fucking freaks in here. Like there's, there's a lot <laughs> it's of, it's a da- it's a double edged sword. Yeah. Cause I, mm. I don't want to, I don't want like random smaller content creators to like, uh, you know, get the ire of like one collaborating with me because like, like you're big enough that it doesn't really matter. And you have your own like base yeah. of haters as well. Some of it's shared, I suspect, but like, um, if I'm bringing on like a random person, mm. if I'm bringing on a random content creator, I, I worry that like yeah. they're going to get fucking ripped apart. Like Nick is not green is what I was thinking of. He's pretty big on his own. Uh, he, he's pretty he's pretty sizable on his own. Right. Like and the first time he ever got like straight up fucking eviscerated on Twitter was after he came on to this broadcast and we like reacted to funny TikToks and like. <laughs> The most insane fandoms got together to be like these two fucking pieces of shit. People that hate streamers, people that love, you know, J pop and want to be idols themselves. And like, even though they're Westoids, uh, people that fucking uh, Nazis, Groypers, Lolly fans, like any and every community that I've had something to say about basically got together and we're fucking destroying this dude. Now, He's also large enough that it's not the biggest uh, issue, but I don't want to fucking put that on. That to- and he's like, and he's, um, well, I guess Nick is. Is, is Nick white? I, I don't, I don't think he's, I mean, he's like I white passing out if I like him, kind right. of. I don't know. I, I don't know what he is, but I don't give a shit. But regardless, he's like, 
He, he's I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no. I, I just like legitimately don't know. I think he's like, I think he's Filipino. Maybe he okay. might be like half Filipino, okay. but um, yeah, he's spicy white. So, uh, but regardless, like he, he also didn't have like, uh, like open avenues of attack, mm. like, like being black, for example, or, or being trans or, or being a woman or, you know, being, uh, lesbian, gay, ace, right. that that sort of thing. So it was like that's one thing I'm scared of with this. Like I, I popped up with Jesse Gender on a stream, and uh, it was on her stream, thankfully, so it wasn't that bad. But like every time I post a trans creator in my community tab, it gets the 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 level of toxicity goes up like tenfold. So I get yeah. I get that point, and it's kind of like so the, that's the that's the double edged sword, and that's part of the reason why I don't do it. But but I won't lie, like oh, it's mostly Sean, racism. Shout out to Sean the Black. Okay, hey. yeah. Well, this, Sean the Black is like an OG Hasanabi head. A word. Yeah, Sean the Black thir- also. He's a thirty month subscriber of mine. He he's also made hour long video essays. Yeah, I know. I tell <laughs> I, I tell him not to do it as well. You keep but. doing it, Sean. You're good at it, but also probably more stream actually because. You know that way. So Shauna Black, I'm I'm coming on yours next. I got to go to Shauna Black. Um, and, yeah, he's uh, great. Oh, man, other brother, I can't, whose name I can't remember. All right, let's let's we've 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 done enough. Bull. Let me let's let's laugh at some Republicans. I, I, yeah, I, I I've done enough serious stuff. My kids are in the pool. Actually, let me check on that shit real quick. What time did I get here? I don't know. I mean, it's definitely been an hour though, because at the top of the hour, there's another three minute ad break, and I remember running it last time you were here. That's how I keep track of time. So okay. it's definitely been an hour plus, maybe like an hour and a half, as a matter of fact. Okay, let's let's. I'm doing good. I got the massage. Okay. Hey, thank you, physics for the ten gifted and blast save for the five gifted. Here's the three minute break now. Um, what was I gonna show you? So, uh, and that's one thing. I, well, no, no, actually, I'm gonna get away from that. No, no, no. Go shop. ahead, go ahead. Well, go no, ahead. I do love. We can we can talk. We can we can talk shop. It's fine. No, we don't no, have no. to. We don't have to look at Hogwatch no, like at do, all. Because I kind of wanted to look at the Andrew Tate stuff too. Uh, but afterwards, indeed, indeed. Um, oh, this I, is why the the see look like immediately trying to fucking uh, it, this, trying to start this, shit. This is my when I said there's an overabundance of 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 the pictures of black white relationships in media people. because it allows for corporations to virtue signal their wokeness. Why liberal consumers by presenting a veneer of progressivism? It is an extension of rainbow capitalism, and surely that means I am a uh, anti miscegenation because that's fucked up. <laughs> Because you know, listen, I, I've been saying I'm a supporter of Doctor Umar, so I don't know. Shout, I, shout out, shout out to Doctor Umar. It's, it's, it's fucked up, like because Doctor Umar is. I will give him this. His take on Spider Man made me fearful of how they were going to handle the interracial relationship in that movie because the way th- I made this argument. What did he say on Spider Man? He well, just because he don't want the snow bunnies. You know, it's Doctor Umar. Exactly what you think he said. I'm just, I'm just saying. Right. <laughs> I saw, I saw how he was behaving in a, a, at that New Jersey mall on that faithful afternoon. Oh, so. oh, when he when he held the one white woman's hand, right? So, uh, so like interracial relationships. I stay away from temptation. I, I, I mean, temptation <laughs> stays away from me. <laughs> uh, thankfully, uh, basically they they just always do interracial relationships. Like, imagine if every, I don't know, give, insert. Imagine if every insert marginalized community here's representation was the only version of it was the most palatable version for white liberals. Yeah. That's what interracial relationships are in the media. And I, I and I have some of my best friends are interracial relationships. Right? Yeah. So like <laughs> I mean it it's it's it this still is, spells is, some level of progress so, so, that, like, so, that's, I guess, like, that's uh, happening, but it, it obviously, but it's, uh, it's, it's, but we've moved beyond it. Right. And so when I, when I, that, the depiction of their relationship was actually, I think, an excellent version because it showed, even though, it, without actually explicitly being about a black and white dichotomy, it showed, one, why they were connected, and two, why there's, there's conflict happens in some interracial relationships, where a white person doesn't understand the nature of existing in a black body in America. So in Spider-Man's case, it was being the 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 anomaly of spo- spoilers. Spider-Man spoilers. Uh-oh. In in spite of in Miles's case, it was being the anomaly of um of Spider-Man. And so Isn't it also written by a white dude? 
It, it's at least one. It's no the way that movie worked. No, no, definitely, no, no, no. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the original uh, Miles Morales. I the, think the is original. Like, I have never read too much of that, but I have heard enough that the actual comic of Miles Morales is very is is not nearly as radically inclined as the movie was. The movie try you know at Disney you know yeah. Hollywood wokeness of course but like i think there's a line Written by a white dude with black children oh i didn't know that oh he might okay that's 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 cool i mean like i would hope that he would want that but he also said a phrase in the in the comic like i don't want to be known as black spider-man which is kind of a red flag when you kind of like like i get the context of of wanting to bring the mr b this oh, from- they saw it? <laughs> You're so cooked. <laughs> uh, message from my wife. I got I got a bunch of, I got boxes of Feastables and a Mr. Beast Nerf gun. There's only one, though. I'm stealing something from you. I'm, <laughs> I'm, okay. I'm, I'm taking this with me. Um, <laughs> what the fuck was I saying? Anyway, I don't even want to get into that shit. The, the point is, fuck Twitter and, and, and fuck my anti-miscegenation um, haters. Um, oh, do you see the Black Thor stuff when they did that? Oh, for uh, Heimdall. Oh my God! With the fucking, oh yes, that's what with I'm the gold about. chains. Uh, and... It's like yo, we're we're ripping and rapping. That's Thor. <laughs> hip hop, hip hop parade. And it's like that shit was so funny. And, and that's like this. The whole conversation is about black people controlling their representation and narratives and voices in mainstream media, and. By Odin's fade. By Odin's fade. <laughs> I, I think that was the actual line. Yes, no, it's, it was. Right. It's so, so like, good. When you don't, when you aren't critical of that, you get these shitty depictions of blackness that we've had most for the most of the fucking like. Literally, there's like there's black media which Obama kind of killed, and then there's excuse me, blackness in media, which. It's like it's a roll of the dice of what you're gonna get. Are you gonna get Get Out or Spider Man or um, You People that Kenya Barris just did? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Or almost everything Kenya Barris does. Um, what do you think? Ooh, this is an interesting topic. What do you think about Kenya Barris? Kenya Barris, shout out to Sergeant he once Park. called me handsome. That's nice. You are handsome, but I do have disagree. I not disagreements, <laughs> but I do have criticisms of his his content. Ken, Kenya Barris is every every black creator worth worth something is trying not to end up like Kenya Barris right now, because Kenya is very successful and he did a thing right. He made Blackish, and like the first like two seasons, I was with it because I was like, this is this is new, this is cool. It's like black stuff happening here. And then by the third season, you kind of, it sets in what's happening. It's basically here is safe black. Here is a safe black commodity for the consumption of white people. I've, you've probably said that already. I've, I have a friend who wrote for the show that I make fun of all the time for that reason. <laughs> yeah. And it's, and it's just like, all right, Kenya. But I mean, get the money. I mean, don't. Uh, I'm at a point me. where it's like get the get the money. I mean, he's just a writer. Way. He's not like he's not Kenya Barris. You know he's what I right. mean? So for me, it's like go ahead. And like we're not even getting to like the colorism um, on the show, and maybe in his, you know, I'm just saying on the show. Um, and it's like so that's like, and those are conversations that don't even penetrate. Like his last Netflix show was. I mean, his last Netflix movie was just like it was. Fucking horrible. It was so bad. It, it was, it was like, not like, don't get me wrong. See, I can't, but for the record, I normally would never say that uh, in public, <laughs> at least. You're here, so I'm like See, more I'm, comfortable. I'm giving you. I'm giving you See, a, this is why I'm too comfortable. I'm too comfortable. too comfortable. Too comfortable. So, what did his last movie do, right? It was, it tried to have a conversation. It was cringy on purpose. And so I gave it like a pass for that because I think it knew it was cringy. But like the longer I sat with, I was like, so like, you had a you got a whole Netflix contract, and this was the the move you decided you were gonna do, and you were gonna have, uh, you were gonna you were gonna give Eddie Murphy you gonna you wanna like the whole concept of hotel oh you are gonna have God. Eddie Murphy he had uh, that would have been the sickest character if he was a real black nationalist yes like, it would it was complexity so, it was so good it was so unique. And it would have been so great, and then it wasn't. It was just like it was just. What left, is the lowest hanging fruit? I it can was do. left flat on purpose, I think, because like 
if it actually was uh, more complex, it would be terrifying to, to like a broader liberals. audience, which is why which liberals. Is the whole fucking point. Now, his first scene, he has Fred Hampton was murdered on his chest, which is a radical. It, it, it's oh my fucking god! It's the. It's the. Uh, We're talking about Kenya Barris's new uh, latest, not his, new his uh, latest Netflix movie with uh, Jonah Hill, and um, I can't remember the sister's name. Yeah, uh, which is you people you is people. what it's called. Somebody put it in the chat. Uh, it was very feel good. It was like yeah, it was very like, like the, it's it, the, there's a complex conversation about commodifying blackness, commodifying blackness explicitly for a white audience. What is your range? Of, what is your comfort zone? Are you Kendrick? I don't think anybody d doesn't respect how Kendrick engages with his blackness, right? Kendrick definitely has a predominantly white audience because he's too big to not have that. Yeah. But Kendrick's art is very clearly informed by his black experience and it is uncompromising in what he does with his art. So Kendrick gets like 10, 10 stars, right? Five stars to Kendrick. You go down a couple of steps and you get to like, Chat, who who name some black entertainers you all like, chat? Because <laughs> I know you all will give it to me. Um, oh, so you go you go a couple steps low, you get Donald Glover. Okay. Mm -hmm. Donald Glover is still really good with um I think so. explaining like a black ethos and a black aesthetic and goes back and forth between saying, Hey white people, let me explain blackness to you. And then also, hey, here's some stuff about the black experience. It's just genuinely just for that, right? Like literally every other season of Atlanta does that, yeah. right? And so definitely, definitely a very uh, interesting evolution from like doing internet doing, skits, doing Derek comedy. Yeah, are you, Derek, are you OG? Because yeah. I, I was an OG uh, Donald Glover. People think was I hate like, Donald Glover. All right, yeah, uh, yeah. Yes. The the Derek comedy shit. Yeah, people don't yeah. even know that shit. Um, so and then you get to the lowest level, and you're probably at like. Damn, I don't want to do this to Kenya Barris. He's not because I don't think Kenya Barris is cynical. I'll say this: Kenya Barris. I don't think Kenya Barris is lowest level. Yeah. I think there's uh, what are those? There's the dude Drake. That, that's oh, a good one. There you go. I'm sorry. How did but I? But it wasn't this? even. It, I wasn't even gonna say it's that. not there's, Tyler there's Perry. A, no, there's definitely there's definitely lower levels than that. There's yeah, the true. dudes on TikTok that dudes do on like TikTok, the, the, the the dancing the while they're dance eating. Yeah. yeah, like that's definitely at the lowest rung of right. content where it's it, like explicitly for racist white people to right, laugh at. Right. So I say, I say it's not Tyler Perry, even though I have a lot of critiques on Tyler Perry because Tyler Perry has no interest in a white audience. He's just in incredibly manipulative and like pandering to a specific black audience that keeps giving him money. Um, and now he owns BET from what I heard, which is, I'm not even going to talk to you about that. That's I'm going to say that for like, me and Ola Renati are going to have to have a conversation about that. I refuse to. to I don't know anything about BET. I only know like the Leprechaun movie. You see. Because I didn't grow up here. I, I thought I, you were from California. No, I grew up in Turkey. Okay. I didn't. I, know I came to America in 2013. So, are you serious? Yeah. So that's part of the reason why, like, um, despite the fact that I have no accent and I have a pretty good understanding of like American culture, there's like massive blind spots. That, and that's one of them. That, that blows my mind. So you've been here for just a decade. Yeah. Look at you doing the American dream. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, exactly. That's wild shit. Yeah, I did it. Why can't you? Why can't you? Exactly. Pull yourselves up by the bootstraps. God, if I did commentary like that, I'd be popping. Oh, um, uh, it would. My life would be so much easier. Freaking, uh, damn, this is going too fast. I want to like talk shit to the chat. No death threats. No, it's better. That, trust me. It, it's better that you're not. Oh, okay, good, good. Um, Not a bad thing. Somebody said Candace Owens. So I guess kind of, yeah. I guess that's where we get to the bottom. Or even worse, like Jesse Lee Peterson. Hello. What's up? It's my brother. Oh, okay. Nice to meet you, brother. Marat. Brother. Um, but he, uh, he actually has a big boy job. He builds satellites. Oh, shit. Yeah. So he's just in here. He's the, he's the smart one. I'm the I'm the black sheep of the family. Who makes all the money and everybody. But unfortunately, <laughs> yes. Uh, you would expect a... Uh, a Fucking satellite, satellite building, a literal rocket scientist. A literal rocket scientist would be definitely way wealthier than he actually is. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, it, it's 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 all good. What? Well, so, so that so you just getting here ten years ago. What's? I, I think I asked this earlier. What's next? Is, is there is there a next? Like, are mm -hmm. you like how how long? Like I like I'm talking. 
you know, I'm, I'm thinking about how long I got. Like, I literally need this massager. I'm going to take it from you. You need to take it. All right. So thank you. I appreciate that. Like, because I'm old, I cannot keep doing this. I have, like, numbness in this hand that I use to edit. Oh. So I'm like, I have maybe two or three years of making videos like I do right now, left. Right? After that, I have to figure out how to continue to feed myself and my kids, yada, yada, yada. And I'll also be, like, pushing 50. So I just can't imagine myself being 50 years old arguing with, you know, 20-year-old white kids on Twitter. So I think about that a lot. You have gotten way higher than me in like a shorter period of time ish. I don't know how long you've been. Well, doing. I mean, I've been, I've been doing commentary and and writing and doing all of that uh, on camera, especially like and and in front of a prominent audience since uh, I would say like 2014, 2015. So I've been I've been around for a long time. Okay. Well, so but, but yeah, so like, but I blew up in 2020 for sure. Okay, so you around the same time as me. So yeah. yeah. But like, so are you, are you saying, are you thinking when well, you're my age, like I'm, I just turned 41. So you got nine years and then you might die by the way. Yeah, I know. Um, are you going to still be, uh, in, in front of this, uh, the channel at looking at the chat? I, I've had opportunities, uh, uh, even like earlier, like a couple of years ago to make, uh, a change in, uh, in my career to go in like the legacy media route that mm -hmm. I, Refuse to take because I like what I do. I would never do that. That's yeah, I, mean. I love... Like, that's why I said, like, when you ask me how do you do this, I'm like, I'm mentally ill. This is real. I I like the editorial independence that I have. I like that I don't have to take on any fucking... Uh, I like that I don't have to take on any advertisers if I don't want to. If I want to, I can do it. Um, and, you know, I... I do enjoy uh, having a sense of community. So the way I make this content, it's it's in many respects not very easy to recreate by others because no one wants to take yeah. on like the the mental anguish. Yeah, it's a that's it, another like, thing. I'm, we have I like ask. a very we have very cushy lives. Uh, ultimately, it's not like I'm fucking in the coal mines. You know what I mean? And and doing backbreaking labor. Right. You know this can be backbreaking in certain instances because but I'm it does take a like literally my wife. Yeah. Like I. I've gained probably 20 pounds since I've got 100,000 subscribers. I have multiple health concerns that I did not have before the stress of this work. People that saw the drama video saw me have a panic attack in the middle of an interview. Um, and then, like, you know, my wife is like, dude, you're always on your phone working, which is partly just, like, checking analytics, like, keeping up with the bullshit, reaching oh. out to people. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, my family always emails. yelling yeah. at me about that. And so, like, I know, like, even if, even if, and so, I, let me make sure, I, when I say I'm not going to do legacy media, I mean, like, going on the news, I'm assuming, is, like, what people want from you. Like, I would never, like, do, like, normal shit. But, like, it's, like, I am, as soon as legacy media comes with a big enough check, I'm going to cut that check and then, like, figure out how to live off of it <laughs> for the rest of my life. Yeah, um, I, and then I, do videos, like, every six months, like, um, yeah. H-Bomber guy. Um, but I, I still have to say it's because this is a weirdly taxing job in a, in, in a way that people, it's hard for people to understand how like, and I couldn't imagine and that's me one video a month. Maybe I'll tweet something stupid and controversial once every, you know, two weeks at the signifier versus 10 hour streams, four or five days a week, Hassan Piker. Like, yeah. you know, I, I, I like it. I, I don't mind it. Like it would be much nicer if everybody liked me or at least was like charitable or at least fucking left me alone if they hate me. You right. know what I mean? Um, but I don't mind it. By the way, it's seven days a week. Oh, fuck <laughs> I, I'm shit. live seven days a week. <laughs> yeah. Um, but that's it. it. It's just, I enjoy it. I enjoy the, the sense of community that I have. Mm -hmm. uh, it was, it was almost a crutch for me, especially during COVID. Yeah. I was doing 13 hour streams every day, yeah. 13, 14 hour streams, 12 hour streams a day. Um, because you know, I just, I, I, I loved having, I never took it for granted. I loved having a place where there were like like-minded individuals that were like openly leftist or at least willing to learn about these sorts of concepts. Yeah. Cause like I said, when I started off, it wasn't like that at all. Yeah. So I, I never, I never really thought that it would get to this uh, point. And I strike a, a 
I think I take strike a decent balance. I, I have a lot of normal friends, normies, civilians, uh, that keep me grounded. I try to have like some semblance of a personal life. That's not, you know, immediately in front of everyone's faces on, on camera. I have a pretty strict like diet and workout regimen. Mm -hmm. I'm incorporating other stuff into the content I create, like with, uh, with, uh, traveling and whatnot. Like I've, I went to Japan recently. I'm going back again. Uh, this upcoming week. So, dope, dope. so like I, I have, um, I am at a point where I realize there's a lot of opportunity for me because I, I have all the material uh, freedom to be able to accomplish things that I want to do. So now I can like marry that with content mm -hmm. and, and do it that way. That makes sense. That makes sense. I, I am a, also I don't have kids. So that changes things. Yeah. Like, like it's, I haven't had, that's one thing I'm I'm a, I'm scared as shit about, is when my kids my kids understand that I'm a YouTuber, and they will ask me about Mr. Beast, and I will like, <laughs> I will avoid uh, talking too much about. I him. told you already. He's he's like out of all the content creators that your kids will be watching, he is like he's the least problematic. Yeah, he's like I, very I've seen very this shit. PG. Like he, he's very PG. Yeah, it now. is now. We had, but we we had. I had a whole conversation with them about why your billionaire shouldn't exist, and they teamed up on me. And so, like now, I'm debate growing my kids. It's like I've really been infected by. Yeah. Wow. They <laughs> they they like billionaires. They're like, why why not? Because they're like, why not? They, they can help people. I'm like, well, so helping people, and what is happening in this content are two different things. But I will say, shout out shout out to my kids. We watch when we were watching Spider Man. Um, the scene where uh, uh, Indian Spider-Man comes on and he's like, uh, this is where the British stole all our stuff. And I, I nudged my son and my son's like, I know that, I know that the British are evil. And I'm like, yes, it's good. Good job. Good job. It's and then good. when we find out, I don't know what we just did or saw when he find out, found out that Spain was also uh, colonizing people. Everybody calm down. It's like not a spoiler. Okay. Chill. It's, it's yeah. Like it's, it's a, it's a joke. I didn't even get the joke away. But, but, you know, so anyway, so like we're, we're doing well, but like the kids thing changes things because, um, like I think about that a lot. I think about, uh, if, if, if like, if one thing, if I didn't, if I didn't have any kids, it was just me and my wife. Right. Or if I was single and like I dropped dead in the middle of editing a video, you know, it's a interesting Twitter thread. Right. But like having, and I have black boys. And, you know, and there's like a, a, a level of, I don't even want, I want, the only thing I can call it is psychosis the, and the way you have to look at the world when you're raising black children and black boys in particular, because the way that racism and white supremacy targets black boys is unique, but also, and it's unique for black women and black queer people, black trans people, et cetera. Like it's unique, it's unique in all these ways, but I think it's one of the least understood dynamics uh, cause, because black boys are also on some moderate levels protected and engaged with patriarchy. And so people kind of leave that veneer of patriarchy on top of black men. Like, yeah, it's just y'all. Y'all just be patriarchal. It's like, uh, patriarchy don't work for us that same way. And like, I need my boys to understand that. And like, I can't expect anybody to teach them that except me. So yeah. if, if I leave here and some debate bro fan runs up on me in, on the street, and I don't go home, like it's a different level of disengagement, or more realistically, like I fucking debate bro fans. Um, if I leave here and don't I have worry, a heart they don't attack, leave their houses. <laughs> right. You're fine. On if that, I, if I leave here and I have a heart attack or a stroke um, from the stress of making content, um, it be, it's a it's a completely different opportunity structure for them, like completely different. Even though my wife has advanced degrees and can make plenty of money without me, made more money than me before I started doing YouTube the absence of the guidance I explicitly provide, not even just a man in the home or father in the home, but the specific guidance of here's how to navigate and understand the world as a young black boy there, they lose that. And then all these other negative outcomes raise exponentially. And so I am never thinking about this job outside of, um, or without thinking about, the, when it ends because yeah. it has to end at a certain point for me to know 
like I'm going to be healthy. And like, I, I've, I've lost, you know, like four or five, I'm trying to lose weight very slowly. So I don't like boomerang. So I've lost like four or five pounds in the last couple of months. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm seeing my doctors on a regular basis. She's, she, she's she, bored. She's bored. Like get back to, uh, yeah. anyway, you get, you get more of my point though. Like, so, yeah. it's, so I do get that. Um, and I, and I guess that's, that's beautiful in a way. Like I love that, you know, all criticisms aside, you do a very important, you play a specific important role that wasn't here. Um, as, as much as, uh, uh, Sneeko and other people try to make the leftist men into soy boys. Um, yeah. and that, that being bullshit, but it is explicitly valuable to present, um, stereotypical traditional masculine images connected to these politics. And cause historically they've always been there. Um, that's also part of the reason why, like, I don't really get too upset when, like fem cells will get fucking mad at me for some shit and be like, you're a sex trafficking child sex trafficker. Cause it is never like a normal argument. Um, cause it's like, okay, well it's fine. I, you're, I mean, you're misguided in many ways and it doesn't really matter, but like, I'm like, I, I, I'm a counter to people like that. I'm a counter to people like, uh, the, the weirdos that want to, uh, take advantage of the pre pre existing forms of acceptable oppression mm -hmm. to to basically make a career out of it to use that as like a fucking rocket ship in the same way that Andrew Tate did actually yeah. utilizing massage quiet quiet get down I might need to take her out again to, to pee because this is when she gets like rowdy and then does like the angry pee which is you know, I can't even take care of a dog I don't know how the fuck you take care of children that's crazy it's <laughs> Define take care. Like it's it's a challenge. I right, go ahead yeah. and do that. Yeah, you can. You, also, you can pause the chat by scrolling over and just like hitting the scroll. That's a big tip. Cool. All right. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. Let me get here. Off. Off. Good girl. Sit. 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 Good girl. Wait. Wait. So what do what is all this shit? Mean? Wait. What is oh, the, so it's a puppy sit. emoji. Okay. Sit. And then Kaya screaming baseball. That's just saying. Let's go. That's let's go on. Okay. Did you like Spider Man? Spider Man was fucking amazing. Um, it's 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 a it's top ten, probably all time movie for me. Um, let's keep going. Have you played Fallout New Vegas before? It's good. I don't like open world games. Um, I haven't played the new Zelda yet. Uh, I just, I don't like open world games. Uh, shout out CJ to X. Um, let's see. Can, which, oh shit. Shit. Can you touch the el your elbows together? Okay. All right. I haven't played Street Fighter six yet. Um, I am at the age. I'm so good at Tekken that uh, I can't play anything else. I'm too old to learn a new fighting game and be good at it. And so, like, with Tekken 8 coming out, my attitude is I'm not going to try to learn Street Fighter uh, 6 because then I'll have to, like, go through a harder learning curve with Tekken 8. This is good. I, I stress the importance to my chat that they should uh, get their dog to meet black people. So that Yo, dogs, dogs are racist. People yeah. don't know that. No, I know. I, I try to explain that because, like, I think it was a chatter that said it originally where they were like, oh, are you like introducing your dog to black people? And then everyone started dunking on him. And I was like, no, no actually, that's, like, real, like, that's like, literally why dogs become racist. We, we under like these are there's so many conversations around blackness that we don't even bother talking to you all about. So one of the things is like you can always tell when a person a dog will tell a dog will tell on you how racist or white your friend circle is by how they respond to you. And so if I come in your house and your dog is immediately suspicious and aggressive of me, I'm like, okay, yeah, you don't have any other white people in your house. Yeah, um, it, it, it's like the only the only black person or the brown person they see is like the post office guy, you know, the postal service worker. Then they're like literally going to fucking bark at every black and brown person that you, your dog sees. Uh, buy your buy your nieces and nephews uh, children's books with black characters in them. Um, that's one thing I, I would do with my, uh, friends of my, uh, kids is like for a birthday party. If we bring a gift, we, we would sometimes bring a gift with black characters in it because 
it's little like the way way the way racism works is, is insidious. Um, it's meant to be invi- rendered invisible. You yeah, know? that's why uh, you people and certain types of images of blackness being only a specific way is a problem because it doesn't challenge the status quo of how blackness has to exist in the, in, the, in in reality. So a little shit like you know, not like critical race theory, ca- brother. Like critical, and critical race theory is like <laughs> one, or whatever Republicans define it as. It's, it's so like critical race theory is is not even like. It's, it's, it was never so. It's not. That's not even what these conversations even be about. And like, critical race theory is very mid, not mid. Like as a, as a theory, it's a great, deep, dope theory. But it was never meant to be a like focal point of a political movement. It was yeah. meant to just be like a academic uh, area of, of of inquiry. Well, that's precisely the reason why it was never like actually critical race theory that they were criticizing. It was always Fucking like history. whatever. <laughs> yeah, like an like an accurate. Uh, telling of history from the perspective of like assuming black people are full fledged human beings. Yeah. Or, or just recognizing the role of white supremacy. Yeah. Like the, uh, I just started watching the six, uh, one, six, one, nine. Is it one, six, one, nine? One, six, one, nine. What? 1619 project. I oh yeah. I don't, I don't know anything about that. Um, Wait, is there, is there a show now? It's, it's like a, it's, it's on Netflix. I think it's a 16, 19, it's 1619 Project, but I didn't realize there was a, a show around Netflix it, too. Netflix has a whole uh, miniseries. Or is it Hulu? I'm sorry, Hulu. Um, and so, like, even something like that, right? Like, because that's, that's produced by Oprah. So it's like, it does all this great stuff talking about the nature of, of, of white supremacy being baked into Americana everything. Mm-hmm. Um, but it also, you know, it... it, it and, and that's kind of the challenge. It pulls, it pulls, a, you know, it, well, from what I've seen, it, it pulls a handful of punches. I don't want to get into it. Uh, and that's kind of what happens with all black media because we have to filter ourselves through white institutions, you know? Yeah. So let's talk about Donald Trump because I don't know what the fuck's going on. He got indicted. Uh, Donald Trump, uh, he, in the most Donald Trump way possible, uh, hid or refused to give back uh, classified documents. And now uh, he very he has like a very serious case against them. Like he might actually fucking <laughs> like in a normal world he would one hundred percent go to jail. Like let's just say it like that. If he wasn't Donald Trump, if it was anyone else, they like immediately, immediately. go to jail. Like no shot, obstruction of justice. There's thirty. Uh, there's thirty seven charges. Only one of them is like a little spicy espionage, being like you know the intent to distribute it to like foreign entities or whatever. That one might not stick, but the 36 are just, like, straight up, open and shut. And, um, like, they they designed this case to be, like, impossible to argue against. So it, it, so tell me, tell me if I'm fucked up here. I kind of want them to hold up because I would, I would rather... So first off, I want to be very clear. I don't fuck with... What the fuck is our president's name? Joe Biden. Right. Yeah. Joe but Brandon. If I have to between if I have to pick between Joe Biden and Donald Trump, obviously Joe Biden. If I have to pick between Donald Trump and Ron DeSantis, I'm personally more scared of Ron DeSantis. Yeah. And I think that Ron DeSantis could probably actually beat Biden in a general. I don't think Trump could beat Biden in a general. I don't know if uh well so I agree with what you said. I actually said this a while ago, like with respect to Ron DeSantis, but then I changed my messaging around it because like when you know when i saw how he performed i haven't watched a single thing he he has no charisma and like the likelihood of him getting out of that primary alive is is slim to none but what if so i'm basically banking on a yeah well well trump can still run from prison (laughs) yeah he can oh shit you're serious yeah in America, you can't actually vote from prison, but you can run from prison. Eugene Debs did it, uh, and and won one million plus votes. <sighs> Famous socialist Eugene V. Debs. Okay. So so there is precedent for it. Um, you can you can still you can run from prison. You can become uh, you can become the president from prison. Uh, that opens up an interesting uh, legal argument as to considering that this is a federal case, he could right. actually technically. Uh, pardon himself it's never been done before for obvious reasons so he could technically pardon himself and get out of uh get out of prison um so 
you know, he, he could still do that. So even if he goes to jail, it's like, it's more so I'm just banking on infighting between the Republican Party's like more reactionary base of support that comes out in the primaries and is a very important force. Right. Force to be reckoned with in the primaries versus uh, like how difficult appeasing that base while also uh, trying to win over a, a, a general uh, electorate. Yeah. Because it's like pretty much almost impossible. The only way you can do it is if you are, uh, as I like to say, you know, uh, Obama for white people. Well, I mean, so like and that's similar, kind of my feel- similarly charismatic to Obama. They don't, like, do they have anybody like that? No, no. So no. It, well, that, that, that's the, that's why I'm scared of DeSantis though, because so I don't I didn't know he had no charisma. I figured something had to be going on in Florida for him to win twice. Oh, oh, here. oh. Um, and then I'm I'm a bounce in a second. Oh, you are. Okay. Uh, there you go. No, because I gotta we gotta go to dinner. Gotta feed the children. Yeah. Um. Uh, Getting nice out too. Sun's coming out. Yeah, we might actually. Well, they went to swimming, so we'll see. I'll see what my wife. I'll see what the kids is talking about when I get there. DeSantis. The thing that scares me about DeSantis is those white, that white electorate will vote for DeSantis. They won't vote for Trump. Is my is my belief because yeah, normal whites like uh, suburban whites that are like I like tax cuts and like a little bit of racism, but like not so much uh, yeah, volatility. Basically, basically. Are looking for a person who's going to give that to them, but. Trump um, forced them to acknowledge how racist they were in public for the first time. Like if, if I if I if I put on if I put my 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 uncle's hotel hat on for a second, um and and talk about the the value of Trump, uh, and this is something you will hear in you know uh, uh, a lot of a lot of circles and black barbers whatever. Trump's the one thing that is true is that Trump forced white Americans to like openly connect themselves to an overt racist. Yeah, through through political power. And like they would rather not do that. <laughs> yeah, there you were a, a lot of people that are like, you know, educated or or wealthy suburbanites who uh, want all of that without the the optics of being associated with right, it. Right, right. They don't want to wear like the you hat. said. White supremacy is insidious and invisible. It's made to be invisible. So when you have someone who's like openly saying the things, um, that actually that actually is very captivating. Well, unsurprisingly and terrifyingly very captivating for a big base of support. But after four years of that, I, right. I think people were like, yeah, I don't, I don't want this. If I'm not mistaken, I, the, it was, it was cause Trump actually gained in every population except white men in, in from 2016 to 2020. And, and that was the, yeah. the reduction in white male voters was re, was the real reason why he lost. Cause that represents a much larger base of the elector in Georgia. Like, um, Stacey Abrams lost, right? But Herschel Walker lost to uh, God's kind of okay. I can't remember his name right now. But Raphael Warner, Ra- a radical liberal Raphael, Raphael Warner, yeah, Raphael, radical leftist who who hasn't said anything about Cop City as far as I can tell, though. Uh, yeah, he's not. He's not, he he's not that radical. Not that radical, but you know, it, that's even like though, right in his area. By even the though way. they did, I love whenever like there is a prominent uh, black senator or anything like that, or well, in his situation he's also a preacher uh they immediately hit him with the uh jeremiah right where they're of like course. he's he's connected to jeremiah right of course of it was course. awesome it was, yeah, indeed indeed um that <laughs> i'm not i'm not gonna do any obama more obama obama slander but um no you can do it all day i mean i do it nonstop. i don't know when we when we sure. go to uh when we go to um walker like walker lost because white moderates wouldn't vote for him you know what I'm saying? And like they had a they had a choice between Stacey Abrams, a quality Democratic candidate and um, whatever our white guy's name is, who is a John Ossoff. Uh, no, no, no. John Ossoff won, too. But no, the, uh, the Republican governor candidate. Oh, Brian Kemp. Brian Kemp. Yeah. Who who for what it's worth has not been like Ron DeSantis. Right. He's he he yeah. wants his Disney money. He's he yeah. He's Brian Kemp's actually really interesting because he's a fucking horrifyingly racist piece of shit and right. his Secretary of State like quite stole, literally, stole, literally the election, stole the election. Which by the way, I don't know how you feel about Stacey Abrams, but I I think she's not great. She's she's, she's she awful. is awful. She is the basically what I expect from from Democrats at this point. Yeah. If, if oh, all yeah. the Democrats, yeah, 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 exactly. That makes sense. If all the Democrats were yeah. Stacey Abrams. That would not have still suck. Yeah, no. I, <laughs> she's, she's, if she were the, she were the extreme, 
You know what I mean? If she were uh, cinema, if you replace cinema with Stacey Abrams across the board in like yes. the Democrat, it would Democratic, be better. Whatever, it would be better. Right. But but then again, I don't know, because she like immediately went and worked oh. for a Center for American Progress, got five million dollars from Michael Bloomberg. There was also oh, everybody got everybody in Georgia yeah. money from Bloomberg. And then <laughs> and then on top of that, the other part was like she apparently was like funneling money into her best friend's uh, like law firm or something. There's like a lot of, uh, you know, so financial they, misdeeds. They're going after her for um like the wave she created because she became a little celebrity for the Democrats. Yeah. 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 Um, and, and she's a, uh, single, uh, you know, large black woman, which makes her a, and uh, going back to that optics target issue. So like they want to get her because like, it's going to be a pile on situation. So I have heard that. I just like I, my, my relationship with, Demo- with, with electoral politics in general is I'm not paying attention at this point. Um, cause I have, I have little minimal faith. Um, but like, if you if you aren't openly embarrassing, and like I have to vote for you, like with the same energy as like I wash my hands, you know, what I'm saying? Yeah. If, I, if I take a shit, I need to wash my hands afterwards because that's what you do. So it's like I voted for Stacey Abrams, I voted for Warnock because Georgia, like I'm I, like Georgia is a. I, real, I do think Warnock, like he, he, Warnock's as far got some as shit in there. Well, I, I would say that Warnock, as far as like the way he carries himself, as far as his background, as far as his messaging, definitely was more openly progressive than Stacey Abrams, though. Yeah. Whereas, like, Stacey Abrams hyper-focused on, like, shifting demographics and how, like, we need to open up more, uh, you know, we need to uh, open up voter access, and yeah. that was her primary thing, but then... But also police. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, Warnock, Warnock, if you, Warnock actually, if you... I know I don't know a lot, so, like, feel free, whoever clips or watches this when we talk about uh, getting into Warnock's past, but I know Warnock's uh, into liberation theology, which is, like, an overtly leftist... Yeah, right. Um, and engagement with Christianity, and that it may not seem you may not be impressed by that, but that no, is no, actually, no, I would be impressed by it if it was real. If, if it was, oh, it's, it's, so it, well, I mean, I've, I've I've heard it's kind well, of. Real. I'm just saying, like, if it's real, like if it's it, tangible, if it was like, if I saw it in his policies gotcha. or in the way that he like, uh, in the way that he even utilizes bully pulpit, you know what I mean? Because like that's what I thought originally as well. Mm-hmm. That's why I was like, oh, like whenever. People immediately go, oh, Jeremiah Wright. Like, uh, he's like, I, oh no, not me. He, he didn't even fully do that. To be fair, he he just he basically played up the the MLK side of things and and, and not made MLK and the Santa Claus into black Santa Claus, like all of them do. Well, no, but he he. I mean, he. I think he's literally from the same church, yeah, which is why church. he was just like saying, like, I'm close to MLK in my uh, perspective, but like. Not the not the democratic socialism aspects, I guess, or the anti imperialist aspects. But I don't know. I'm not in Georgia. I mean, and that's the, the 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 weird thing about where I think all leftist politics. So, so, so to give back around myself, right? Like I I started moving left in the middle of Obama's second term. I was like a, like a lot of I think older millennials. Obama was like a turning point for me politically because like my, the first vote I ever laid was for Al Gore. So they kind of give you an idea of how things mm-hmm. went from there. And so like, you know, you go through however many years of Bush and you have this extremely charismatic figure come forward and he's black. And like, I never imagined that I would actually see a uh, black. Oh, what well, public safety is just as a false choice that we do not have to make. I support law enforcement. I support the right of people this to have their voices. Answer, oh, God. He said <laughs> he supports the right of people to have their voices heard in the conversation, but also he supports law enforcement. Uh, we need a comprehensive approach to public safety. Training is certainly a part of that. If our approach is comprehensive, police have to be trained somehow, somewhere. At the same time, we need a comprehensive approach, which means investment in mental health in schools. Oh, God. Damn, yeah, did no. that ha- just happen today? I mean, yeah, literally, literally earlier this morning, according to Axios. So... <laughs> Yeah. No, he did say something. He didn't say he did nothing. Say something. <laughs> that's something. That's not It's not what I would have hoped. I would have rather not, him not said anything. That's that's tailored to make it seem like he's not saying something when he's saying everything. Well, I mean, uh, you know, the the uh Democrats, I mean, Atlanta is ran by black Democrats. Atlanta is ran by black Democrats. And it's like when people get mad at me for like and I be giving, I be mild as fuck in my in my Democrat uh, attacks on in my content. Yeah, I be real, you know, like, hey, it's bad for these reasons, okay. And like other people are like, you know, really taking them to task. And I just, I be mild, but I still get a lot of heat because, 
that status quo is so fucking intoxicating. And like all the evidence is there that the people of Atlanta, especially the black people do not want this police training facility, let alone the fact that the police don't need more training. They're not actually going to be training um, and training doesn't work. Right. Uh, but like, you know, shout out to um, uh, community movement builders, shout out to uh, Kamal Franklin. Um, you know, they talk about the fact that there's a, they're now facing up against overt Democrat power structures to get this through the, the DNC was planning on being in Atlanta and they, and they were like, we ain't coming to fucking Atlanta, which all handling this shit. Like this is, it would be, it'd have been a black eye in the moment. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Um, I got to find, uh, speaking of cop city real quick. I got, I want, I have a question for you. Yes, indeed. Um, this is, this is something that I think about a lot, uh, but. I, I'm sure you have also seen this, but like we basically kind of briefly touched on it where like a lot of a lot of content creators, I think, tap into um, younger black, predominantly male audiences by talking about pre-existing uh, constructs like forms of oppression, whether it's like patriarchy or in certain instances, it's like, um, you know, anti-LGBT sentiment, things of that nature, PUA stuff. And I do think that that kind of content uh, has a lot of... Uh, I mean, it, it's captivating for younger audiences in general, not and just black general. audiences, but younger men are looking for that kind of thing. Um, and I, I don't... While there are more uh, white counters to that sort of stuff, which is, you know, it, it's still ultimately not all that effective... There, there isn't like um, I haven't seen a way where where there's a big wave of I mean I guess outside of content creators that you mentioned in yourself there isn't as big as a a counter movement uh, that is like objectively leftist uh, black content for black audiences that's like objectively leftist there are examples but they're not as popular is what I'm saying so a couple of things. The reality is outside of um, Kevin Samuels, who was like an anomaly on so many levels. Yeah. That stuff isn't that like overt misogyny isn't as appealing to young black men as you might think. Um, and, and there's also not as much value in it for the content creator. What I think is more common Somebody, I just saw somebody say Tariq Nasheed. Tariq Nasheed, like, just like for that's, me. Uh, that's old. But Tariq Nasheed's audience was white men. You know what I'm saying? And like, you, damn, he's going to come after you for that one. <laughs> I never said that. It's the, it's the fucking truth, Tariq. Your audience, when you were I, doing I, your pimp hustler shit, it was I, all I am, white men. I, I am pro ADOS movement. I don't know what <laughs> this man is saying, okay? Please don't come after me. Um, And so, like, so, you know, and Kevin Samuels' audience was probably. I'm, it definitely wasn't predominantly uh, women, right? But it was way more women driven than male driven than than your typical manosphere figure. Yeah, the actual black manosphere; those guys can't. Because he was hot. He, he was he was attractive. He <laughs> was traditional. He was conservative in a a palatable way. Um, and so it, it and he was talking directly to women, which is something the black manosphere couldn't do. The actual black manosphere they can't get more than a, a cup of like a hundred people in a given chat, right? So. I, I don't, I, I'm going to just be, if I'm honest, I, I think what you're seeing is mostly smoke and mirrors and, or, or no, I'm, I'm, I was thinking more of like, uh, people like Andrew Tate. Right. And, and there are plenty of other like content creators that aren't like exclusively black manosphere content creators at all. Right. I just meant like manosphere content creators and how they can like sometimes capture a, an audience of young boys. Right which also happens to include black boys as well. They use, so it's the same thing of um, why this fucking guy with the little Dirk, the same thing he's doing. It's, it's, it's the criticism I have through a lot of my content, which is blackness is such a viable, valuable, and easily accessible commodity in entertainment, right? If I can project a, uh, if I can project the black image in the right way, people will pay attention because people, they love our shit from rock and roll, rock and roll 60, yeah. 70 years ago to Obama 20 years ago to, you know, whoever's coming next, they love our shit. And so 
you're always going to pull a handful of, of young, you're, you're going to pull more people with anything you do if you can attach a black aesthetic to it. And so with these young boys in particular, you're going to, just like your energy is going to collect young black boys, you know, like a Sean the Black, right? Is going to collect them into whatever you're doing. It's more so about, I actually did my paper, so I did my master's thesis. I do think that that is like much smaller though, for me especially. The, like my my black audience is is definitely, uh, I would go so far as to say like what is it like six percent, seven percent? It's actually lower than um, like someone like XQC, for example, would probably have like a larger black audience because he's not like overtly political. Does that make sense? Yeah, the politics change that, but even. I would say XQC's black audience and Andrew Tate's black audience are still going to be a lot smaller than, um, you know, like per capita than mine or uh, uh, Corey Kenshin. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, because the thing, the thing people I, don't Corey Kenshin is who I was thinking of that's like one good example, like great example that's of why like... Don't, that's why we don't get a, through the door. A political content creator that is like, you know clearly putting on like a very uh solid message yeah and it's so like i know i know you all just finished beef with them and i don't i'm not fans either but like uh abba and preach mm -hmm. right they're apolitical they're definitely right wing but they're they're like semi-apolitical they they pull a bigger they're gonna pull a bigger black audience than sneeko or andrew tate or any of these guys yeah because like historically that's kind of what i said earlier about patriarchy and black men we have access and are protected by patriarchy in a lot of ways, but the appeal of patriarchy doesn't look like the bullshit that happens on the internet. Most black manosphere dudes are would be considered clowns in their like greater community. Like if I in real life, whenever I like like black manosphere dudes are like debate bros in that they only have power and exist like the hyper misogynistic people. Only we get out of black manosphere. Like if there was a a kid in my kid's school, a, a black boy in my kid's school doing the Andrew Tate thing, uh -huh. he would probably be laughed at by the greater black boys because it's so try hard because it's yeah. so divorced from the actual aesthetics of black masculinity that they're seeing. And this is not to say, I want to be clear to anybody, um, to, to whoever's uh, going to be critical. This is not to say that there aren't elements of, you know, misogyny, misogynoir, all those things that are happening in the black communities. It's just that, that comes from a different source than an Andrew Tate. That comes from that comes from the reality of black life in black communities. That comes to overarching um, uh, influence of patriarchy. You might you might say that comes. Yeah, that's from why like, that's why I specify by saying like I'm not doing the classic like uh, white liberal shtick of being like, well, what about homophobia in the black community? Black community? Like. I, I wasn't singling out the black community in particular to be like address these crimes. Like it was more so trying to that understand that it's the, like every it's every community and uh, it exists in every community. And I, I feel as though like young black boys are also susceptible to that kind of message, just like young white boys are. And the I guess for me, it's like I'm not accessible. Like I don't know how to approach it. I don't know how to reach out uh, to you can't. Yeah, I don't it's think I'll be not, able to. It, it's you, 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 are, you, are, you will not have, you don't have the features that you need. So you, you can't. You're smartly and thankfully are not like if you were to pull, if you were to become Eminem or some shit, <laughs> right? Yeah. If you were to come in here and like overtly throw on a black scent and like present like a black veneer, you could catch some of those same young boys. But you, thankfully, because I was saying Aiden Ross, you, you want me to be Aiden Ross. If you were Aiden Ross, yeah, you could do it because then you then let's look because a See, lot look, of these young boys is, told you to wear a do rag, dumbass. <laughs> Please don't I would do get, it. I would get that's canceled. bad. I, I have I have worn it when uh, when someone sent it to me. You didn't uh, know what you're <laughs> well, I mean, I, I, I had to. It's uh, that's a, a, a black fan book. of mine sent it to me on uh, on one of my PO boxes. I had to do it one time. I, I'm I'm not gonna I'm I'm going to hold that <laughs> for you in the moment. But no, like so, like Aiden Ross is actually a perfect example because he's he's racially ambiguous, kinda. Um, yeah. He he presents this black aesthetic. He he involves himself in you know the black vernacular, all these things. Yeah. And so, like, if you are a young black, you are a young black. He talks man. about he talks about issues that like 
young black uh, boys are talking about. Right. As well. But he ain't got shit on, um, what's the fucking guy's name? Top of the food chain right now, streaming. Young oh, black Kai. Metal locks. He ain't got yeah. shit on Kai. Yeah. And so it's like the black boys are actually watching Kai. Oh, 100%. Like, they love him. Kai, th- I thank you for- it's, br- like, it's like Kai and RDC are at the top, like, with respect to that. And I think, like, RDC especially, I would say, but Kai as well. I think they, like- Kai, for being so young, I think carries himself a certain way where he understands that, like, he needs to be brand friendly, which yeah. is a very good thing, in yeah. my opinion. And they're like, also he, he, trying. You yeah. Know what I mean, like, the, the thing that, so when you're going back to, like, even talking about my sons, when you are a young black man, you don't have a lot of imagery to aspire to. Like, the, the images, the positive images are often manufactured, and yeah. you can kind of tell the negative images may feel familiar, but they're obviously negative images. And so like, you're kind of in a wavelength in between those two extremes. Um, there's, there's, there are black, there are young black men that don't fuck with me because I'm, I'm too soft. You know what I'm saying? I'm too gentle. I'm too friendly to like trans folks and, and queer people in my, in my audience. Right. Um, and so maybe they'll like, you know, some of the younger dudes I, I fuck with more, uh, and so those young boys are always looking for images. It's like all boys. They're looking for images that reflect the, the, what, they, what they're trying to aspire to. Yeah. And so the, the absence of a black aesthetic, a manufactured, I'll be clear, a black aesthetic, then you versus a Aiden Ross makes that difference. And then, of course, there's a reason why so many um, Manosphere major figures historically, maybe not now, have been men of color. Andrew Tate. Roosh V, Kevin Samuels, um, and probably a couple of more. Um, Andrew Tate transcends that so much that, like, it's I, I often forget that he he's is. like, like his dad was literally like a black chess. He was. A, he wasn't a grandmaster, but like I think he was like I am. Yeah, he, and, and yeah. His his dad was a black chess genius. His dad looks like the type of dude. Like when I saw his dad, I was like, oh, this makes so much sense now. But I want to get into that. Um, and so, like, even though he doesn't engage with his blackness, his blackness gives him a, an explicit access to, like, this. <sighs> People are saying, I I didn't know Tate was black. Yes. Yes. Tate, 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 is, Tate is, he's technically half black, and people argue about that. You mentioned Eidos. I don't want to talk about it. Oh, um, I was just <laughs> kidding. I, I, I was definitely joking. Oh, um, but, like, so, yeah, Eidos is ha- uh, Andrew Tate's half black, and there's a way that white males in particular fetishize men of color, right? Yeah. Even 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 a Roosh V or Andrew Tate or even you like is he, you're still spicy white. Like if you were just a nor- if you were just a if you were from uh, Wisconsin, you wouldn't have this chat doing what you're doing. Probably you would have to be more like an Aiden Ross or insert <sighs> shitty debate guy here to to get. It's actually really interesting. I never thought about it like that. Yeah, like- it's like I, I I'm Turkish, so like. I'm technically white, you know what I mean? In the right. way that like in the way that I grew up in in Turkey, I'm a part of like the dominant in group. Mm-hmm. Like if whiteness is proximity to power, I'm politically white. So I never really thought about it right as like uh being anything but that. You're not Georgia white though. <laughs> yeah, no, no. <laughs> You're not come visit me in in Atlanta white. And and like and so because of that, there's people in this chat they and it's un, and it's not like and to be to be nice to the people in the chat. It's a very unconscious thing because, as we've said multiple times, white supremacy is insidious and renders itself invisible. So you don't even know that you're project that there's a projection of man. And then also, you're an attractive man. You're a tall man. You know, it's all these different features. Yeah. And so, like, there's an attachment that you're about to, a bunch of white people on your chat are gonna be like, "Oh my god, I have to stop. I'm racist. I'm gonna stop watching because <laughs> <laughs> Um. But because of that, like, that is how that is how a lot of this shit works. And so you're maneuvering multiple discourses of race and gender unintentionally. And so, you know, you're, you know, so like Kai or like in the politics combined with the absence of uh, certain aesthetics is not going to find 15 year old, like the same 50 year olds that might fuck with me, even though I have the same politics, you know what I'm saying? They see, they see, okay, they got the locks. I think our audiences are nerdy, though. Man. That's what I mean. Like, They're I, not as nerdy as you think. Or you think well, so? Well, my audience isn't as nerdy as you like, think. Because, like, the way I see it is, like, I, so I, I 
I play a lot of basketball. It's like one avenue that I have to like talk to people directly mm -hmm. that don't know who the fuck I am. And I, I take advantage of that as like a normal person. You know what I mean? And every time I talk to like, I don't know. I mean, there's a very diverse group of people, but like anytime I talk to like black teenagers, they all, they love Aiden Ross. They know about Aiden Ross. They obviously love and idolize Kai. Um, but I don't think they're like that invested. I mean, it's, it's sampling bias, obviously. Well, no, no, it's, it's, I mean, yeah. So that, them in particular, right. I, I don't know. I can't call it, especially with Aiden. Um, but it's also like the aspirational masculinity. They, they can't aspire to what you're doing that much. They have to find something that is more in line with what seems realistic and what seems accessible. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If they, if they aspire, like the same <laughs> there, the, if they aspire to what you're doing too much, they're going to face criticism from their peers because of how distant you are from black aesthetics. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you, you just, you know, it, it is what it is. And on the flip side, the one of the reasons why I, I do what I do is because I want to break down why that aesthetic isn't all that healthy to begin with. So that, you know, young guys, young black boys are aspiring further to e even like a childish Gambino who I'm like very critical of, or uh, what's the dude that plays he's, he's in look, he's Stanfield, right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like who also is like, He's gone down like a weird path, I think, post COVID. No, don't tell me. Yeah. No. I mean, I I loved him. I I love him. He he worked with fucking Boots Riley. Like you yeah. can't. It doesn't get any better than that. So I figured Boots. No, I'm I'm I'm. Mm. I think he. I mean, who knows? He may just had a moment because he's also a rich actor. I, Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Post post. He's like, don't say keep Stanfield. Yeah. No. I I thought he did like post COVID. I remember seeing some stuff. Um. But. Somebody will do I it. I think he's uh, – maybe it's not like that. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. We're going to we're gonna rebuke any – we're going to hold that. I can't bury any more black men I admire. Like, between um, – we were starting with Cosby however many years ago, and, like, I wouldn't even get into the Kanye shit. And, oh, yeah. And fucking uh, – now Killer Mike. Like, people I wasn't even expecting to come out of, come out of a bag like that. Um, anyway, I'm about to take this and just – Oh here, I'll give you the I'll give you the Mr. B stuff. Hold on. Oh. Still, people are still saying Killer Mike isn't bad. <laughs> hey, he's not as bad as like you know. Insert other person here, but it's a it's a problem. I don't have to show it. It's fine. Let's see. There's the Mr. Beast face. He has a bar named These Nuts. Yeah. These Nuts. Oh, he sent me so much. What the fuck? Oh, dude, these are massive packs of. Oh, God. Text Nuts for 69420. This is this is why like. This is why I should I should have listened to my friends. What did they say? <laughs> and not came on here. They this said is a, <laughs> if they had told me he's gonna give you Mr. B stuff. I mean, these nuts stuff. These nuts. No, they'll love it though. I mean, I know they're gonna love it, Hassan. Yeah, that's the crazy. fucking problem. Yeah. Why isn't this like stuck? I don't know, but here you go. Both of those boxes. Uh, all right, all right. We're gonna take Mr. B stuff for the babies. I'm gonna take this massage. This was dope, man. This All was right. dope. Appreciate you. Thanks um, for coming on. I don't know if I'm going to come on.